bear with me for just a moment here as I try to to get Fontificator to stop crashing and well to cause itself actually so that I can try to restart it and try to get it to connect again. Because apparently it doesn't want to work anymore. Uh, just as easily as it used to. Alright. Yes, I gotta do this. Alright, I sure hope that didn't crash all Java related processes. Alright, time to play this again, I guess, while I. So it's not just quiet while I try to struggle with this. Alright. Because for some reason it seems that. Apparently I need to revalidate my authentication thing every time I want to connect to. Pontificator now, even though that didn't used to be the case. I sure do love it when stuff works. But while I'm trying to get that straightened out, I guess I could say... Hmm. In just a few minutes here, unless something goes phenomenally wrong, we should be delving back into... <coughs> into one of the grindiest Castlevanias. But I do have to look for stuff in the background while I'm getting that ready. Alrighty. So, uh, also, this music is, is from uh, Castlevania 4 originally. You might remember it if you have a very good memory. It's called Clockwork Mansion. Well, it's not called the Clockwork Mansion, it's called Rotating Room, but a place in the area called the Clockwork Mansion. And there's a reason why I'm playing it right now, even though it technically doesn't correspond to the game I'm gonna be playing today. Or does it? Alright, I've revalidated my thing. Can I please connect to Fontificator now? There we go. And that's that's the best message. You can't see it yet, but uh, you can now. That's the best message to start this off with. All right, now time to save the configuration again, because I want to keep my want to keep my Symphony of the Night overlay as the default. Uh, configuration for future uh, 4x3 reference. Ah. Alright. Oh goodness. Oh my, I might have to loop this a little bit actually. I have a feeling I might just have to... Actually, wait a minute. Hmm. This thing is not quite as... There we go. As... Muted as it should be. There we go. For some reason, the fortificator window might have gotten very slightly smaller. I don't know why, when that happened or why that happened, but yes. I know it looks like... I can actually connect to stuff now. Isn't that incredible? Also, let me... Ah, fuck it. Replay this one more time and see if I can be back before three and a half minutes are up. Thank you. 
All right, I return. I take it it's been longer than three and a half minutes. Okay. Also, I quietly raise the limit for how much you can bet on the adventure thing to like how much how much is that however much that is i just tap the nine button on the number pad to the rhythm of the song that many times okay well yeah it's time for me to actually start the game now so let me go over here and and uh here we go I think it's 10 times, okay, so... Here we go, time to delve right back into the Super Grand Castlevania Adventure Circle of the Moon. And probably finish it, since we're actually quite, you know, we past the halfway point-ish, yes, not yesterday, on Friday or Thursday, I think, which is when I started it, and... Uh, that was, that went on for about, let me see, two, four, about four hours, and I got past the halfway point, I'm pretty sure. And I did some off-screen grinding, uh, there is that. Also, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to finish it now. Uh, let me go ahead and start the thing, or try to... <clears throat> okay, there it goes, I think, maybe. For some reason, sometimes this emulator seems kind of a... Uh, seems a little bit reluctant to accept the, the controller's input sometimes. Or at least this game does. In particular. be regaled by the the dulcet tones of curialation as I get some of my wires untangled now. There we go. And uh, where am I? Oh yes, I moved. Uh, last time I saved I was somewhere down in the down in the underground gallery. Uh, where the I fought the zombie dragons the last couple of bosses that I fought but in the meantime I have uh, done some grinding to get a couple of extra cards and by a couple I mean a few more like there's only five left so and uh, all right this is the B button over here You might recall we got the ability to push these very heavy boxes, which we got well after we got the ability to dash and everything else. Because I guess the boxes are very difficult to handle. And we can get to this place where, you know, there used to be a, an a HP max up here. I got it already, but... I was also able to grind that guy, the Archdemon, for one of the cards. Let me see if I can remember which one. Because, let's see, you already had all of these, but I got Mars. Apparently, he's dropped by the Bloody Sword, which is, you know, in this same area. There's a potential of change, which... Probably gonna have to do some demonstrations. I already got Diana before. He was either Apollo or the other guy. Had the potential to create explosives, or maybe it was one of these, I don't know. Might have been one of these. Oh, the other guy, Neptune, has the potential of healing. Neptune is kind of a funny story as to how I was able to grind that card, but... Also got Golem from the Stone Armor, I think. A mockery of man made from clay has the power of Earth. Cockatrice is said to have the ability to turn things to stone, has the power of stone. I don't remember if I got that from the Panther or what, but... I think I did. 
Griffin is said to have the head and wings of an eagle and body of a lion. He has the power of wind and thunderbird while we have so. Well, obviously, before we go any further, we need to test these new cards and see what powers they give. Mercury and Golden gives an Earth Whip. Mercury and Cockatrice should give a Petrifying Whip. That looks like a bunch of rocks. Mercury and Griffin. Ooh, okay. I forgot that was a thing. Let's see how that works. It's kind of alright, but not being as effective as Crusade Room, but I also think I turned the sound down while I was grinding for whatever reason. Yes, I did. Let's crank that up again. Yeah, that's more like it. So yeah, that's a Wind Whip. Continuous attack will occur while attack is held. Oh, I didn't realize that. It was like a single strike thing like the Crusader in my head. Not sure it doesn't really help all that much though because the attacks uh the strike's power is kinda of diminished, but let's see now Venus and some of the other I think Venus has some passive effects though, so I will let that one defense increases as the percentage of the weapon coward increases. Calcatrice Unfortunately, Venus has some of the passive ones that you don't really notice unless until something happens to you. And it doesn't get recorded until that actually kicks in, so... Uh, there's a right, thing up there that I forgot to... To... Oh boy, here comes Dracula's Huey again. Oh wait. Just saw a glow, so how oh, you can experience points from walking. But only from walking, not from running. So that's great. What else? You know, sort of hay axical. And Griffin. Griffin, let's see what that does. If we can. Raises intelligence, alright. I think that's pretty much it based on the stat increase. Of course, can't get rid of these things, so I don't know. The thing about intelligence is well, what happens if we use like a sub weapon? Well, hmm. I can't really see how we could demonstrate that though, but I think it's kind of obvious what that does. There's a problem with raising intelligence with a DSS effect is that, you know, you need that too. What that affects mainly is other DSS stuff, so it's kind of silly to have that. What about all the other Jupiter effects? That's oh, defensive, alright. It's gonna be like rocks surrounding me or something. Or not. Oh, wait a minute. What was that? How much the invincibility duration is four times as long? Alright. Maybe the cockatrice is gonna be. Uh, let me guess, it's iron flesh. Transform into stone and be invulnerable. You say invulnerable, but I'm obviously not invulnerable. And I can't run. Uh, Griffin. It's a mystery. Oh wait, we can get a sonic wave to protect us while dashing. Hmm. Here's another thing that I forgot was in this game. It's another variation of the sonic dashing wave, but actually I think this is the first variation of the sonic dashing wave in the Castlevania. Kinda had something like that in Symphony with um, the wolf form, where you could dash quickly and run through enemies and damage them that way, but... I got to use a sword as an alternative weapon with Salamander and Mars. What about Serpent? 
We get an ice sword. Which can freeze enemies. And Mandragora, let's attack with a rose sword, I guess. Uh, Mars and Golden is... Big Haber, alright. Let's see how that works, I guess. Kind of takes a while to swing. Causes earthquakes. Right. Arson cockatrice has. Uh... Oh, okay. That. Whatever that is. Tonfers. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to say tonfas, but alright. Then there are tonfers, is what you're attack with. And Mars and the Manticore is. also tonfas. Oh, but it's another DPS thing, I guess. Dual attack at least. Can only do it twice though, by the looks of it. Poison Claws. Arson Griffin is... Looks like another attack, I guess a quick attack. Doesn't really seem to help all that much against these guys. Sword draw holding attack longer will... Okay, inflict more damage. Well, I'm glad the game tells you because it's not really that obvious just from trying it out. Try. Okay, that didn't help at all. So you really gotta wait before you're able to make good use of that. And Mars and Thunderbird is probably gonna be... Oh, it's... Some sort of... Martial Arts thing. Oh, that apparently does quite a bit of damage. I'm guessing it's not gonna be very effective against these guys, though, because they're... Oh, it might be. They're like, you know, lightning element, and so is the Thunderbird. But I guess it's non-elemental, strangely enough. Also, from what I saw, uh, Venus and Griffin, like, raises intelligence, doesn't it? Because, uh, right now I have, like, normal intelligence, but if I turn that on, then it goes up, but... Oh. Okay, something happened now, instead of, uh... Oh, I guess it noticed it because the the mana bar is recharging, so I don't really notice it otherwise, that's a thing. Unless you look at the stats. But, uh, let's see now, Diana and Golem. The one that apparently releases more stuff when you attack, alright, like that. A series of stones that it's not particularly impressive against. Well, nothing seems to be that terribly effective at this level against the these lightning armors. If we hit them with these rocks that we should though. <laughs> if they were a little larger, that would be a bit more effective, but. And about the griffin. See, this seems more effective. When wave is unleashed with each attack, and the thunderbird would be... Mm, nothing terribly obvious right now. Or now. There we go. Electricity fills the air when the whip is sp spun. Alright. Is that the correct conjugation of that? I'm going to assume it is. Wait a minute, Apollo is the... Uh, has the potential to create ex explosives, alright. I forget though if you have to like, do anything special to... Activate a oh, okay. Bomb is thrown... oh, that was, that was a complete coincidence actually, but... I do remember that at least the one that lets you summon stuff, which I think is the one that comes after Neptune. You have to do a special combination. Oh, wait a minute. I haven't even turned it on. That's probably why. So we can throw an ice ball, a bomb, and probably some other elemental stuff with this. What's that? Like a... A rose? A rose is thrown. Oh. Okay. 
We can make that appear. Let's see how it works, I guess. Well, at least we're invincible during that. Stalactite. I don't think that's stalactite. That's just a spike. It's very obviously man-made. Oh, meteors. Which petrify. That's interesting. And it could certainly cost more, so... A comet. Is it like a cloud of poison? A poisonous bomb. Alrighty then, I can see myself getting some use out of this. And then a big electricity ball, which... Which, if I recall, is pretty much going to be... Uh, which, if I recall, does like continuous damage until it goes through the enemy or it like, dissipates. But the one that I'm really glad I got is Neptune. I actually had to grind a bit uh, extraordinarily for that, because Neptune, what it does is once you pair the card with a certain elemental card, then you can absorb all damage of that element. Which, as you might imagine, makes some parts of the game a joke as to how easy it is to get through them. And as you can see, if I pair it with Thunderbird, I'm invincible against these Thunder Armors, and... And as a matter of fact, I absorb... their damage. Not completely, but like a very small fraction, but you can pretty much see what that does. Uh, but you do need an, uh, an enemy of that element, or an attack of that element to be able to, you know, make the game notice what specific combination does. And in order to get the Neptune card, well, I guess, I guess I can kind of, um... I know we'll be going to the area that I went to for that. Uh, before too long, so I guess I could hold it off until we go there. Well, it's a bit of an out-of-the-way grind, as... You will notice, alright. But for now, we need to go back here to the entrance. Well, these will wisps and the skeletons and the clanking mans are... Mans, yes, I just said that, and not men. Because that's only the correct uh, variation of that word. Uh, and as you can see, I'm doing upwards of... I'm almost doing almost 1500 damage with each normal hit of the whip to the... Not the clanking men, but the, um, the will o' wisps because of that huge discrepancy between enemy stats uh, between different parts of the game, that is kind of how they built the level progression in this game. And uh, here we go, we make it to the next part of the castle, which is the underground warehouse, and I notice that the music might sound a little bit familiar. wonder why that could be. Yeah, this is actually one of, like, very few games, if any, I can't really recall anything, any other off the top of my head, that actually bothered to remix music from Castlevania 4. That was unique to Castlevania 4, well, except Simon's theme, I guess, that one's, like, a very famous track from that game. That you see in a lot of games, but this one, not so much, even though it's great. I still kind of regret that um, there's no other game set that remix the tracks that you hear when you are in the first level after you enter the castle. Where you fight the ghost dancers at the end, because I really like that as well. Well, that couple of tracks, I guess. Hmm. Oh yeah, I should have the um, Apollo electricity thing equipped, shouldn't I? You probably, probably be using that. I should probably be using that, is what I'm trying to say, but... I cannot construct sentences accurately right now. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot it's not just up and... Also, by the way, welcome to Box Puzzles Land. That's what this area is, pretty much. A 
Hello. Oh, <laughs> just kill him with one. One strike of that. Pretty sure this isn't gonna... Oh wait, it is gonna help. Okay, so... So you can pretty much turn on the... The Neptune card with paired with an elemental card and you become invincible to that element. But apparently the enemies that are of that element, that doesn't apply to them. But yeah. As you can see the poltergeist tables are back from Symphony. You can see why the Tino Apollo Lightning combination is so good. Because it pretty much builds up the damage as it strikes the enemy, but it also kind of uh, travels in a mildly inconvenient arc. But that's just fine. You can actually kind of hit enemies that are above you a little easier this way, so... Here's the... the save point. I think this is pretty much just gonna be the save point of this area. There's not really that much else. Not really gonna be that much else to help you here. Oh, okay. Also, yeah, the poltergeist tables can throw the stuff at you. From pretty far away, if you're not careful, you'll probably get hit by that. Ah, damn it, I got poisoned. Oh well, I have a bunch of antidotes, so might as well put those to work. Helping me not get killed. Alright, so yes, time for uh, time for some more box bottles here. You might notice we have to deal with something like this just to get past this point. At least I think they stay solved once you solve them, but... Let's see... Pretty sure what you're supposed to do is see yeah, this. Get the last box to go on top of this one. So that you can slide through that little gap in the wall there. Don't think that'll be the last one, even though it was pretty much only the first one. Because by no means will it be. Let's see, we got a hard smack up here. And, uh, well, that looks like it might have been fake, but I guess it wasn't. So I sure do wonder how we get up here. Because apparently we don't get up just by jumping. And there's no enemies to turn to stone or anything down there. Oh wait, here's a uh, fucking thunder guy. There we go. I wasn't sure if you could shoot that while, uh, uh... Well, in the air, but I guess you can. I don't mind if I do. You know, I could just uh, to save an MP, I guess I could just do this combination instead. MP and HP. Oh, here we go. We got a box. I guess we're gonna have to push that all the way. Oh, already we got another box puzzle. Gotta very gingerly push it all the way down and then push it to the right to get that hard max up, so... I guess it's technically an optional box puzzle, but might as well do it while we're down here. Yep, sure is nice to play this Mafia Simulator. And it sure is nice that I had to like get several magical relics before I could even get one that gave me a Vampire Hunter the the physical prowess to push a box around. There's no possible way I could be doing this without that. Come on, we're almost there. Gotta put your back into it, come on. Now the question is, are we gonna be able to just like jump straight up here? Yes we are. 
Or like maybe we would have to push it all the way to the wall and then do some crazy wall jump thing to get that, but I guess not. Okay, here. See, we're gonna have a bit of a more dedicated box puzzle in this room. Maybe it isn't quite so straightforward. So we need to go here, I take it, so we need to stack two boxes here. And I already see one of them, but should we just stack that immediately? No, we need to drop this one and the other one first, or else we're not gonna be able to. Or actually, are we? Where's this gonna land? Okay, this is going to land... Hmm, actually this is kind of a problem. Actually, no it isn't, we need to... Okay, we need to destroy this, but not push the box off yet. And then we need to push this one off. And then we push this one off because if we had pushed that before, we wouldn't have been able to make this jump. There we are. Oh, it's a uh, holy armor. Holy armor who hates us, even though we're like totally holy fighters or something. I think you can use the, uh, the card glitch to avoid damage from these guys too. Yep. So there's a card that we haven't acquired yet. And that I'm probably not going to acquire because of these circumstances until under which you have to acquire it, but... You can imagine it's the one that has the holy element. And... We can use the card glitch where you can use the effects of the cards that you don't have already to take advantage of, uh, you know, that without actually having it. So we, we can absorb the holy armor's uh, damage if we so desire. So there is just one more card pretty much that's an uh, action card that I want to get before the game is done. And apparently you get it here, so let me go ahead and uh, confirm which enemy drops it. The scary candle, oh boy. This might be a big grind, but it will be the last big grind of the game, I'm pretty sure. I think I'm, it's uh, another card that we need strictly, but um, you know, I can just cheat to use it if I don't feel like actually grinding for it, but... Still gonna get it, just in principle. Oh, okay, I got attack boosted up here. I almost got attacked boosted up there again, but... Well, let's try clearing the archers on this side first, I guess. Just as you might have, you know, guessed from the boxes that are all over the place, we're gonna need to use that. Oh, but we got a breakable wall here. It's, uh... Older guys turn a hard max up. Isn't that nice? I don't know if I'm gonna go with, like, find all the breakable walls and stuff in this one. You know, I kinda have to... Kinda hoping I'll be able to get through the remainder of this fairly quickish, because I got a thing I gotta do later tonight. But that's not until, like, four hours from now or so. Oh god. Apparently the holy armor really hurts if you don't absorb damage, so... You know, there's that to take into consideration as well. Yeah, let me go ahead and uh, and try to make myself immune to their attacks, but all of a sudden the L button doesn't work. What? Hello. Oh, it's because I. That's why. I was being stupid, that's why. Alright, let me go ahead and absorb. Absorb a little bit of damage while I administer death in small doses. Or try to. And then turn it off because I, I do not, in fact, want to. 
Uh, run out of magic. Because that would be really inconvenient if I needed to do that again. Okay. Like, I guess the game expects you to... Oh, well, the way you're supposed to solve this is... You know, pushing that box down here and then using that as a boost. But you can do what I just did, also. You know, you can also use the potions I've been grinding of the enemies without doing so on purpose, but I only have five of them. They only recover 20 HP, so I don't know how much they're gonna help at this point. It's better to use, use the spells, pretty much. Alright, so... Okay, never mind, I think I see what you do. And it's not just pushing the boxes off, it's... Uh, it's pushing them out partially, I'll bet, so you can use them as uh, platforms without having to... So you can get to the top of this side already, but the other side is a different story. So there we go. There we go, I solved it. Isn't that incredible? Now I just need to get rid of this guy and... The whole world will be saved forever. You know, the fox hunters, which are another... Uh, recolored enemy in this game. They're just fox archers from the clock tower area, but with red shirts instead of green. I oh got also a succubus. Succubus, which I think actually replaces the oh god the axe armors in some of the earlier areas. And a blue bear instead of a red one this time. It's a grizzly. Apparently, grizzly bears are blue. Who would have? Thought. Uh, let me try this. Uh, let me try this. You know, actually turn that on and then. There we go. I don't know if there are green bears as well. Oh, damn it. Probably shouldn't have jumped up to that guy. Alright. I have to make use of this again. There we go. Probably um, another little trick since I noticed that I'm running pretty low on health now. Gonna use the Jupiter one that lets you replenish HP while standing still. There we go. And then, you know, use my time warping powers to speed up time a little bit so I don't have to just sit around for several minutes waiting for that to kick into full effect. Let's continue going down here. Hey, it's an antidote. Can always use more of those. Oh, hello, there's something here. There's actually... Not sure if I would find anything like that, but... I guess it made sense, since otherwise how would you be able to find a hidden place up here? The platforms and everything. So let's... Clear out the insects again and see what kind of box puzzle we got this time. It looks a bit more complicated than the other ones. So again, we need to stack two boxes down there, but how are we gonna do that? Hmm. So already I see a problem with, you know. Alright, hang on a minute. No, I do see a problem with how this whole thing's gonna work. Need to okay. Okay, I think I see what I have to do. If I get the the box that's on the right down to the bottom without uh, breaking the, can I even move it? I guess I'll try it out. Can I move it? Well, there's another block on top of it. No, I can't. Damn it. See now that's a problem because I need to be able to move this thing, and uh, I can't even do that. You have the blocks on top of it, and I don't even know how to break that block since you have to be on top of, uh, or yeah, be on top of something to do the dash thing to break the blocks. How oh, but I leveled up? So let's see. Let's put on our thinking caps here. Let's see. Um, hmm. Okay, if I push this thing to the right, I can break the block on top. But then what? Oh wait a minute. Maybe that's just. Maybe I don't really need to think about it much more than that. 
I thought maybe I would have to like make the one on the left land on top of one of these, but I guess not. It doesn't matter if they were already like all out of the way. Yeah, there we go, but well, the question is now, can I get back up here again? Yeah, I solved it. Let me use the Jupiter power to get my full health before I continue. Oh, we have a little magic now. Try to use this trick while I was running the Neptune card, which, you know, as I may have mentioned, was under very adverse circumstances, and we'll continue to be that way, potentially, until I get to the end of this area. Because you need, you know, ordinarily you have to get something from the boss of this place before you're even able to get to the area where I granted it. And not die. Oh, that really hurts. You know, I should probably be using the card that I actually equipped, which is the, you know, Apollo card and the Wolf card. Uh, combined with the electric one, and I'm trying to now, but I guess it's not. Oh. What? Okay. Apparently he nicked me with the tip of the sword. There we go. So if you do manage to catch your uh, opponent in one of those things, at least it's pretty much guaranteed that they'll die. Well, unless it's a boss, maybe, but... You will have a chance to try and put that to the test very soon. Alright, so... Hmm. There's something else up there in the top right, but I guess we're not getting that yet. Well, is there something else in the top right? I guess there must be or else you wouldn't be able to just see something. Yep, it's a hard max up. And once again, I filled in the map without being able to get it, so let me mark that on the map. I guess, I guess I will actually. Uh, I will actually go back and get some of the stuff I missed from like the parts of the map I haven't filled up yet, because I have actually taken the time to mark them. I say, you need to get this thing still on this map that I have. Oops, this is what I need. Not that. So I guess this whole part of the level was technically optional. You don't have to... Uh, where am I going? Okay, uh, was it technically? Yeah, it was. You don't have to solve this puzzle or... Oh, shit. I don't think these guys were in this room before, were they? I don't think they were. That's not very nice. You know, I talked about how some of the areas in this game get like new enemies added in later. Uh, as you progress through the game, whereas there were weaker enemies there before, but I didn't think they would do that in such a in such a close scale like this. I forgot, I guess, that they did. Alright, let's go almost to magic, so let's try to... ...to whip this blue bear without... Uh, ...using the special card effect. Hello, the man who wants Sega Saturn. How is it going? You know, I can probably kill the succubi without too much trouble, but I don't know. Looks like I should be a bit more conservative with my health in this part. I see as I already start attacking them. There we go. So there's probably a few breakable walls down here, but uh, I can come back and find them. You know, something I don't know is if there's like a card combination that lets you see where those cards are, or where those walls are. 
Just there are powers like that that you can get in. Oh, hello. I didn't realize you could step on that thing. And there are abilities like that that you can get in some of the other Castlevanias. Where... You know, there's something to tell you where the hidden breakable walls are. Like the fairy was supposed to in Symphony, but she never did. Okay, so let me see what we gotta do here. Nice. Uh, hmm. Okay, we can't actually slide through that, I don't think. From this side, at least. Also, thanks for the follow, the man who wants Sega Saturn, so... Okay, we need to stack two boxes here, seems simple enough. Uh, seems simple enough that we could just, you know, stack that one on top of this one, as a matter of fact. A bit too simple, like maybe there's something else to this puzzle that I'm not seeing. Like, you know, this box over here, but I guess I'll try to... Oh, wait a minute. Is it gonna land on top of the... Okay, that's a problem. I'm gonna be able to, yeah. Hmm. So, um, well, may no, wait. I was gonna say, well, maybe if we drop the other one on top of this one, then we can push that one, but uh, tch, that wouldn't work for a couple of reasons. So let's see, what we need to do instead, I guess, is... What do we need to do instead? Okay, I think I'm coming up with something, I think, if we... If we get two boxes down here, okay, yeah, that's work. And put them like this. And then we push this one on top of those, then we can actually get through, I think. That's why there's three boxes that, you know, it was too simple. The solution that I saw at first, because I didn't realize what the distance was. So there we go. And that's where we're going back, so I don't need to bother with that. No hidden walls there, it seems. Well, we've come this far, so I sh hope we can find another save point soon, because I'm kind of, you know, in great need of that at this point. Not to say that I'm not, typically. Oh boy. I'm kind of curious now as, as to how that, um... The Apollo electricity attack works on those griffins, but let's try it out on the plant armor first, I guess. Works about as well as you'd expect with chainmail. Is that better than the steel armor that I have right now? Maybe it's not. Alright. I forget where I get. Oh, that's why I got the steel armor from uh, the same enemy that you get the. Um, same enemy that you get the. Neptune card from. I got several steel armors before I got the card to drop, as you might expect. And welcome back, Redbird. And of course, you know, getting several of any item, like armor item, is <laughs> useless in this game because you can't sell them off or anything. Well, there's an easy way to fight the plant armors, forest armors, without. Um, Without, you know, using special attacks like I was doing with the other one. And there we go. That's it right there. Just duck under the tentacle the extent, but not too far. Also, we made it to the boss. Okay. So we should go that way first, because if I recall this, uh, you know, the route that's over to the right here is just the way out of this place. And thanks for the bits, Red Bear. I think they showed up on the stream. So, who could the boss be? Yeah, it's Death, who looks very, very portly now for some reason, and is wearing a hat that makes him look a little bit weird, but... You know, this version of Death is actually kind of a... Not really that challenging, based on what you're used to from the other games. As you can see, he doesn't really do much, and what he does do is... Oh, that actually latches onto the enemies if they move, I didn't realize that. Oh, 
Alright, so... So, as you can see, it's kind of easy to dodge his, his stuff in this game. As opposed to how it is in most of the other games, and... Well, I guess it does decent damage for what it is. And... He does, once again, have the... Oh, I guess, I think we just reached the second form, so what could the second form be? It's a death turtle. And he still summons the sickles, I guess, but beyond that he doesn't really... Oh, wait. Create a sigil that stops you from jumping, I guess. So he does do that. And then he lifts up his own body and slams it on the ground. And causes uh, ground damage, I guess. But nothing too spectacular as you might expect. Okay, so we can't we can't get hit by one of these if he's always getting hit by one, but yeah, not a particularly spectacular death fight by Castlevania standards. Actually, one of the easier bosses in this game, which has you know bosses like the zombie dragons, who, as you might recall, were kind of uh, actually challenging. And well, we got the cleansing though, which with which we can cleanse specific bodies of water so that they are safe to traverse. I guess we can breathe underwater, so we don't have to worry about that little detail, but... There we are, that's one more area cleared. Before I continue, though, there is something I would like to... Well, first I want to save, as you might imagine. Uh, there's also the little issue that uh, when we beat a boss, we don't get any healing. Like we do in pretty much every other game. So there's that to have to worry about. And also there is something I want to uh, confirm, because there's one more card that I want to get legitimately. And it drops from a candle, oh boy. I'm not quite sure where the... Oh goodness, okay. Oh wait a minute. Did I actually miss something secret? I might have missed something secret back there. Alrighty, so... I see red there still, we got a few decent issues. Lag issues. Uh, apparently there's something else I need from the death room that I completely missed, or the room after the death room. Okay, you need to whip in a very specific place here, but you can find a golden. And then HP backs up and you can see that the, uh, you can see that the golems pretty much move very slowly and then they take damage until the they break their legs and then they just crawl on the ground for the rest of their lives until you kill them. That's how the golems work in this game. But yeah, there's gonna be something very special that we need to acquire now. And so, for that purpose we're gonna have to go back over here to... Well, go over here to this road we technically haven't traveled yet. Uh, because it is it does connect to a road we have traveled a lot more frequently, but I don't know if you can tell just from the map there, but you might once you actually see it. Kill a bunch of golems first, though. And I wonder if uh, 
somebody was so proud of their design for how the golem works that they just want him to stay on screen for as long as possible so that you can see their plight. That's why they've got so much health. And there's no hidden walls here. Break on the walls. Even though that doesn't connect to anything, but do we get another HP max up? And now we can't get out of here. So we end up back here in the first corridor drop of the game. I thought there was like a secret in this room, but I guess it's the one above. Oh, and as you can see, the weak enemies that were here at the start of the game have been replaced with the Grizzly and Arachne over there. And Arachne will try to level you up, which I think might also poison you. I don't know how that. But thankfully, you can actually, you know, break the web as it's flying through the air. At least I'm guessing that's what that is, or else I would have gotten hit by now. We can go to the next area now, immediately, pretty much. Or we can do what I want to do, which is, you know, travel all the way back up to the top left of the castle. What level are we right now? Level 36. Alright. Pretty good level for uh, going on a regular ish run. With some, some grinding. Listen to this relaxing music some more. I don't know. I say relaxing, but like, pretty sure this is the highest uh, tempo version of the Sinking Old Sanctuary that exists. Let's all save while we're on the way. which is kind of weird, because what I hear, you know, what I consider more obnoxious than the doggos is the noise of, like, uh, someone playing bassy music outside, but, which, you know, I'm pretty sure I can hear with some degree of clarity right now, but I don't think it's going to get picked up by the microphone as much as the doggos are. You know what, I'm okay with that. I would rather not I would rather remember the dog goes outside than the music outside. That's uh, being played way too loud to where I can hear it inside here. I'll, I'll beat very fat, faintly. Well, who knows if I'd be able to hear some of that. I doubt it though. wasn't here before, but she's now. Alright, you might be able to hear it now, because it's a lot louder. I really don't want to have to close my window, but I might have to. Alright, it just went quiet again, never mind. Never mind, there it goes again. Why does it alternate like that? I feel like that's even worse, but... You know, I could be saying something about the game, but this all pretty much just... Areas we've seen before and just backtracking to get to a specific area, so... You'll excuse me if... I feel compelled to focus on the obnoxious thing that's happening outside for a little bit. I think it's reasonable. You know, at least I'm not doing an unboxing video where I fail to open the box while complaining about my loud fire alarm the whole time. 
haven't quite gotten to that level yet. Okay, but sure we wanna go up here and this will be a shortcut over to to the other place. The wicked water reptiles, like always. Hmm. Hmm. Hang on a minute. No, we can't get up there yet. All right. Oh shit. Alright, and this should lead us to... Well, eventually this should lead us to the clock tower. Top part of it. Uh, that's that. That's what I was going to say. You know, I should probably be, like, trying to fill out some of these, uh... Neptune elemental card combinations, but I don't even know, like... I don't know, I think um, most of these enemies have like earth attacks. I don't know if golden is earth or. Well, it's not. Or is it dark, maybe? Could it be dark? Because the last elemental card that you get is dark. Oh, yeah, it is dark, okay. So most of the, so every enemy, every attack in this game technically does have an element, and the ones that seem like they don't. It's actually the dark element. Uh, but, alright, the heat shade up there will have the fire element, so... Let's go with Salamander. And there we go. Be able to fill out another little notch in that. At least now we don't get hit by that, even though it still knocks us back. Well, maybe the slime does poison. Let me see. Poison is another element, I think. I think uh, Manticore is the element of poison. Let's see. Yep, it is. And sure enough, that's. Oh, well, we do so much damage now. Poison attacks heal the characters, so we need to fill out wind, uh, stone, earth, plant. Well, we could have filled that in with the uh, plant armor, so I just failed to do that, and ice. Well, we'll be doing ice very, very soon and very, very frequently, though. That's the main reason why I grinded that card. I <laughs> think it's uh, earth armor, I think. Yep. We can do earth now, I guess. Come on. There we go. Did he drop something here? Yeah, drop an antidote. It's kind of hidden by uh, by the other thing, the axe. So let's save here. This is indeed the save room. Go back up to the room where the iron golem was, if we can. Because there should be something else that has appeared over there now that we've gone and killed death again. It keeps happening. Wonder if anyone's inconvenienced by that. Oh god. Uh, yep, at least can they get a green candle here now. It's the scary candle. Can see what it does, and you're supposed to be able to hit it, which, well, as it's falling down, that is. Hmm. So let me see, though. Okay, you can. So, guess what time it is again? Because this card, uh, this card, this thing, uh, has something I definitely want. Let me see if, um,. I can increase my luck further with any of these stuff, I guess not. Do you want to lose the strength ring or drop the strength ring? Because 
Well, there isn't even anything that raises my luck more, and pretty sure I'm gonna need that so that I can get extra. Yeah, you know, the, the strength I need to kill this thing to hit, which I need to do before it disappears. But yes, it is time for grinding again. Oh boy, and I couldn't duck in time. So I'm gonna have to consider that now. But this will be the very last grind of the game, I think, because the last card that I actually care about is dropped by this enemy right here. Not that I care about too, enough to want to grind uh, an actual copy of it so that I can use it without using the glitch. You know, I could also make use of the glitch to access the powers of this card, but I do want to get it legitimately. Oh, damn it. Then we all better let's go on an adventure while we wait. Can I join in? I don't know. I don't even know if it lets me. Let me try, I guess. Uh oh hey. Will it let me join in, I wonder. They are, they're very, very spooky candles. The way they scream, though, it's like... Oh, two players. Alright, it does let me join. Alright, I won, I guess. 50% of my bet. Oh, I leveled up. Okay, how, how much XP does the scary candle drop? 65137 is needed. 64237, so 900, I guess. 900 XP from the scary candle. So. I'm glad that we won. Also, did you see that? Uh, I, I guess you did. I guess the uh, post I made on the thing. Well, the Dark Souls 1 randomizer that I found. It was a great thing where you can get the dark hand from a ledge before you even get to the gargoyles. So, I don't know, I don't think I remember the Dark Hand being that great in Dark Souls 1, because by the point you get it, normally uh, there's like much better weapons you can have. But if you get it at that point in the game, it's kind of as broken as the Dark, the dark Hand in Dark Souls 3 is. I can't believe this fucker isn't dropping anything for me, but then again, you know, the guy that I uh, grinded the Neptune card off of was even worse, but circumstances for even trying to get that card were a lot worse than this, I can tell you that much. You know, I could technically just hold off on this for now and, like, get the card later, but I do want to get it now. Because I like having an unfair advantage, especially in a game like this where, you know, a lot of people don't realize how useful the cards really are in this, and like, pretty sure the very first time I tried to play this I just went through the entire game while barely using them, but, and you know, you actually, and it, you know, the game's pretty difficult that way, but then you actually discover how, how much the cards can break the game, and it's like, yes, how did I, like the final boss of the game oh, is actually the most difficult one because there's no like hidden extra bosses or anything like that. It's actually really difficult if you don't use the cards. To the point where 
I don't remember, it's like, how do you even beat this normally? I remember thinking the first time I beat him as like a 14 year old or something, because I used to save states all the time. Uh, but then you realize that, you know, if you learn how to fucking dodge and you use the cards, then it's a different matter entirely. And you can actually beat him without cheating. Which I managed to do for pretty much the first time ever. And, you know, that wasn't too long ago, actually. When I did, like, that... My first revised run of this game where I just... I uh, tried to go through without cheating, like... Like he used to do back then. Damn it, I keep missing it because... If I mash the... Mash the attack button, then he just keeps attacking without ducking, even though you need to... I guess I could just duck before I'm even attacking at all. That works too. But yeah, what else can I... Oh, speaking of randomizers, I guess I was uh, doing a few Google searches before I started the stream, and well... Uh, basically, I found a couple of extra things that I might want to look into, because well, I've been hearing about randomizers for... Oh, finally I got it. got the Uranus card. Randomizers for... Like, I know that Diabetes, for example, of Ritzapri, has been doing uh, Link to the Past randomized for a while now. And uh, some other people have joined him in that, but apparently there's also a randomizer for Aria of Sorrow, which is my favorite Castlevania, and apparently don't know whether or not it'll work, but also a randomizer for the DS Castlevanias, so I might get around to trying those out. But we got the Uranus card. Uh, who is the former god of the heavens? He has the potential of summoning. I just heard my phone certification sound. What? What happened? Oh, the battery's full. Okay. I know, I disconnected you. Have fun starving. Alrighty then. Uh, you don't need to do a... Specific button combination, I forget what it is though. Oh, it's the same one, alright, so. So here's what you can do with the Uranus card. You can do stuff like this. You can summon friends to go bowling with. Yes, you can see what, uh, what those friends look like too. Whoa, okay. It actually hurts, I don't know, it feels like the older green that should be a healing spell or something. Let's try out Golem on some live targets here. Yeah, it's the Golem. And Cockatrice. And something died off screen because of uh, the Cockatrice's stone. Uh, we have enough uh, for one more Manticore. That Manticore makes a shower of poison that... There's a car beep. Shower of poison that kills the fox archers that are off screen, I guess. Within... Uh, I don't know. I think my favorite one is going to be the Thunderbird, though, which... Oh, just killed the guard arm. With that. Because the thing about Thunderbird, who... Let's see if I can stand here and power enough... Um, regenerate enough mana to... Uh, power one more summoning thing without going into the shape room, even though it's right next door. Or maybe the Thunderbird is just that costly, I don't know. Let me speed it up a little bit. There we go. You can see what reach the Thunderbird has. And I guess we could also, like, um, show off what the other summoning cards are. Because I'm not gonna get those cards, I don't think, uh, because of how you need to get them, as I said. 
I'll explain what I mean eventually. So this one I think is gonna be the unicorn. Yep. Who has the light element? And apparently heals you, okay. So it heals you while attacking others? So I might make this flat too, I don't know. Or no, it doesn't attack others, it just heals you, but it does heal you for a decentish amount, I guess. It's like one of maybe two healing spells in the game if you don't count the absorption once, I guess so. And the last one, which should be the black dog. Wait, who has the. Oops, fuck. <laughs> I screwed up. I'm gonna do this and then do this and then don't do anything. There we go. Spooky black dog who attacks enemies with the dark. I guess it doesn't really uh, come in that handy unless. or except against certain enemies though. Let's just go back to the Apollo Thunderbird thing. I don't even think we're gonna need like these summons for anything other than the final boss though. Or well, maybe the penultimate boss, because that one's also pretty difficult, but... Like the next boss we're gonna fight, I think I can pretty much safely... As long as, as, long as I manage to keep the uh, cross as my sub weapon, should be able to beat it without summons or anything. I probably will use a different uh, ESS combo. But we need to actually go there now, to the area where that boss is. Larkin. Okay. So let's get out of here. If I can figure out where to go. To get out of here, there we are. This the f well, I have to assume this is the fastest way, because it's the most uh, straightforward one. And, yeah, let's kill all the, the animals and the skeletons, and then just drop all the way down to the bottom of this place. And now where do we go? Because we need to go down... Well, I guess we pretty much just backtrack. Just gonna save here one more time. For the sake of being cautious. Wait a minute. <laughs> now that I'm doing this, now that I've saved, I guess I could, and since I pretty much resigned myself to not getting any more cards, let me see if I can show off a very special combination, which is this card, which I don't have, which is Pluto, and this card, which is the Black Dog. I can become a skeleton. And I can, as you can see, I can randomly throw a giant bow in that. Just like 9999 base damage. But I also die in one hit, so gotta be careful of that. There it goes. So you can, you know, if you exploit that uh, with enough skill, you can actually. actually kill and one shot a lot of the bosses. I don't know, I might try it out for the, one of the other bosses that are left. If I get too impatient, but... You know, there's also the fact that... Um, I also... Uh, die in one hit while in that form, so... Maybe not the best idea. Yeah, there you go. Also, hello, uh, PR Alucard. 
I'm doing uh, all the games listed in there, that, uh, you know, thing that Lizard has helpfully listed. And, uh, well, there's... I see I'm gonna... well, I'm gonna complete all the games that are in there, but I'm also going to try out... I have tried out, and I'm gonna try out some extra games that... Actually, I don't know if I'm gonna be trying out any extra games that um, don't show up in that list already, I might, but... Like, for example, I tried out Haunted Castle and Vampire Killer, but I didn't finish either of those. Okay, let's absorb some plant damage while we're here, I guess, so we can get that filled out. And, uh, who knows, pretty much the only game that's not listed in there that I might try out just for the hell of it. Uh, might be Order of Shadows, which is a cell phone one that apparently nobody played. But beyond that, the games in the list are the ones that I'm going to be finishing. So I didn't, did not make the adventures easier, it's just completely random. Pretty much the only thing I changed is uh, you can now bet as much as you want on those. Also, I might as well get whatever's behind this thing. Since we're here. Oh, there's the poison armor. Let's go ahead and turn on the poison absorption, shall we? Because I do not feel like... Well, you might already notice something like... Normally the poison armors are actually kind of difficult if you, or when you fight them for the first time in the gallery. But when you turn on the Neptune combo that lets you absorb the poison damage, then they just become a joke. That's kind of uh, leading into... Uh, wait, what? Missing a thing in the map, but it's above me. Getting into the strategy that I will use for the next area, I could not finish that sentence before getting distracted, but I did. Eventually. Uh, it's not a timeline or old games. No, it is not a timeline or old games. It's, uh, it's mostly based on release order, but I did make a few adjustments uh, for my convenience, I guess. For example, I changed the order of some of the games so that I would pretty much uh, have all the kind of classic style action games uh, grouped into one part, and all the Metroid Venus grouped into another part, and then well, by that point I pretty much just uh, followed release order. <laughs> but yeah, that's, I guess you could say the, it's my selection that I made for this, and, uh, you know, it's mostly based on release order, but not entirely, as I said. That's pretty much how that works. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I should probably have some more plant damage now. And there should be another thing that I'm missing here somewhere. Well, a couple of things. There's uh, some of this that I could have gotten before, I guess, but I just didn't bother to. It's been max up. I do not mind if I do. thing down here that I couldn't reach from the other side. Let's see if I could now. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> Had a trick to get there, but we did it. And it's another HP max up, so I am quite glad that we did. Uh, so I just want to go back down to... Let's see. I want to get out to the left and... I go down to the room that connects to the, the teleporter. Might as well kill some extra stuff, since that gives you more experience and whatnot. Alright, there we go. I'll save again, I guess, since... You know, might as well take advantage of... 
take advantage of the fact that we've gotten more stuff. bottom part of the corridors here, which, you know, would eventually lead me right back to where I want to go, but I think it's faster this way. Boy, this suck you by. Ah. Never beat the battle gauntlet in this game. I don't think I did either. I don't even know if I'm gonna complete it uh, as part of, part of this, because it pretty much be a post-game thing, and... Oh shit. There we go. And I pretty much never beat it on my own, so... Uh, I am doing the right way, yes. Okay. Just gonna save here, and... And then go into the passageway down below here. Which uh, is where one of the broken... Uh, one of the broken Iron Maidens is. And here is the waterway. Underground waterway which I activated by accident in one of the forages I made. And that red water hurts you, but if you touch it while having the cleansing in your possession, it becomes nice and blue, like not really that clear, just blue, like abnormally blue, but but the point is that it's safe now to traverse, and uh, if we keep going down these, uh, this path here, we will eventually find not just this spearfish, but also this guy, the ice armor. He takes quite a few hits to kill, but he was also the guy that drops the the Neptun card, which I already got, so he was the one that I was able to grind it from, which meant I had to come all the way over here and I had to, because of how this room is laid out, you know, have to keep putting up with the, with the poison damage from the water until I got it, so it was not really an easy grind to do, but eventually I did it. and. Uh, you know, this area is also the main, the main reason why I bothered to grind the, the Neptune card. Because the Neptune card combined with the Serpent card turned this, turns this entire area into a joke. Whereas it would be pretty difficult otherwise. Because Neptune card combined with the Serpent card absorbs ice damage. Which is what pretty much all of the enemies in this area do. So this should be quite a relaxing trip now at least. Also the music for this area is... Um, I don't I guess you could call it music or not, but basically it's... not an original composition actually, it's a throwback to an ambient tune from Castlevania 3. I forget what it's called, but it's the one that's place when you're in Alucard's cave. Can go find it right now actually, hang on. Uh, would be here I think, Castlevania 3. Hmm. What if I search for the, the Famicom version? I think that one sounds a little better. Right, never mind. Maybe this version is the one that I'm looking for. Is it Nightmare? It is, okay. 
That sounds a little bit different from how I remember it though, but it's a basic melody there. Pretty dissonant, but you know what, let me look let me see if I can find the NES version too, because that sounds a little bit different, but not quite the same. There it goes. So yeah, you won't really suspect it, I guess. Just listening to the ambi ambient noise for this area, but it is in fact a callback to an earlier game. So now that we have that bit of trivia, let's continue on with this. Continue on with this where I guess you might have noticed already, but... You know, if the previous area was box puzzles, this one's gonna be rotating bridges puzzles. When you hit these levers and you have to sit through this long animation where these uh, bridge staircase things collapse and extend. You know, like so. And it allows you to reach new areas, or not. And I forget if there's any hidden walls in... Or hidden passages, breakable walls in any of these parts. Oh, here we go. I found one. And here are the frozen shades, you know, the actual enemies from Symphony that the... Heat shades were recolored versions of. And have different attack different attacks, I think, actually. Oh boy. And she also got more brain floats, which I guess uh, let me try see if I use uh, I think the Mars uh thing to which is the one that there we go. Tonfers. Whoops. You know, the one that lets you petrify. Well, the tonfers are all well and good, even though it's supposed to be tonfas, but... I think I would rather use the ice sword, I think it has better reach. Better vertical reach than the whip, at least I got, and... Of course, here comes the enemy that's strong against ice. And apparently not particularly weak against fire, either, based on that. I got an HP max up from that, though. Uh, let me go ahead and switch back to, you know, the, the insurance card combo. And try to figure out where to go next here. So as we've been to the corner. Might want to go to the left side here, but like, is there even a... I need to figure out how to access that, is the thing. You can see how the ice armors attack. There's also the fact that those little spears that they form can damage you before they're thrown while they're being formed. You know, if you make yourself immune to ice like I do. And the ones that are thrown at like mid-level can hit you even when you're crouching. Alright, so if I just go left here, will it let me... Uh, this isn't where I came in, I don't think. It's a different part. Shouldn't there be a... yeah, there should be a passageway down here, I thought. I want to guess that it doesn't lead to... Um, it doesn't lead to the place we need to go to make progress, which is kind of why I'm, you know, curious about it in the first place. Here's a problem. I'm guessing I can I can't actually access us now. Can't actually access the thing that'll let me. Get over to that lower left passage. 
So time to see if I can go over to the right now. I'm guessing that's where I'm gonna have to go to. Proceed, even though I need to go a little bit lower than where I am right now. Okay, so get over here and... Wait, wait, just let me speed it up a little because I'm really feeling fed up with the thing, having to sit through those animation weights. Is that much of a necessity? So can we go down here now? Okay, yeah, here we go. How does advance through the water we? Thankfully, also attack with, uh, or also have the ice element, I guess. Also got these Avion Darks that I don't know what the heck they are, but they look like they're electric, so let's not get near them. You know, some of these, um, I guess this is another example of this game specifically, but some of these Game Boy Advance games do have uh, some pretty interesting examples of enemy designs that you don't see anywhere else in Castlevania. The Avion Darks and all of the anthropomorphic uh, kind of uh, redesigned animal enemies that you see in this, even though, like, for example, the hyena. That's apparently an anthropomorphic hyena that shoots you with a rifle. It's pretty much just a redesigned version of the, the skeleton marksman from Symphony. Well, from Rondo and then Symphony. You know, a lot of the enemies from Symphony Edward too. That went on to be reused in a lot of the other games that come from Rondo initially. But for now, let us continue with this exploration. Let's see exactly what we can expect to find here in the frosty waterway. The magic countlet was a drop from like the earth demons at the very start of the game, so I don't really know if we're gonna get, be getting that much more use out of it at this point. Alright, so doesn't look like there's anywhere else to go right now, so let's proceed down this way. Past where the Avian Darks and the fish spear fish are. And also another very special enemy type, it's a uh, Witch riding a broomstick, that's literally just a green skinned Wicked Witch of the West type witch. I think this is the only game, only Castlevania game, where the witches have actual green skin, so they're like Wizard of Oz type references, even. I guess some of the other witch enemies you see are like the ones that originate with the witches in Kid Dracula, but those just look like normal. Well, normal people, except for the fact that they're witches. And then you get the Salome enemies from Symphony, which are pretty much the same way. And those pretty much become the. The base for all the witch enemies in Castlevania from that point on. Except these, I guess. I mean, they do kind of attack you similarly, but... they got that whole green skin deal, deal going on. So after getting that MP max up, which I guess is the point of this whole... extended area over here. up here yet, we did not. Okay, I'm guessing we're gonna have to keep going right to advance, so I'll check out whatever's over here first. Also love how the witches catch on fire and like go 
go down like a fiery airplane would almost. <laughs> like a aircraft that's been shot down. Okay, well we get another passageway up here. Looks like it might lead somewhere too, so... Uh, but, okay, so activating that. Can't really go anywhere else either, I guess. Activating that made it so that we can only go to the right from there. Extended area with the uh, frozen shades. Okay. Mm, do we want uh, to activate that though? I don't know. I guess we do, I guess. That's gonna cause those things to come down, if I had to guess. Okay, so if I had to imagine if we were to. Yeah, it does. If we had come into this room without activating the lever in the previous room, then those things would have been blocking our way. So it's a good thing that I happened to do that. Oh boy, it's another enemy. It's a... Uh, siren, which is a beefed up version of the Harpy, I guess. But it still does into hit, so that's just fine. And all right, so <laughs> once again, we need to. Oh, okay. Here comes another siren. You know, it doesn't have the ice element, so we do take damage from it. And okay, we need to hit the heat lever or a lever so that we can get those blocks out of the way, I guess, and these. Let's see what's at the end of this passageway, though. It might be, oh, it's an ice demon. Well, thank goodness that. You know, we can't take damage from ice stuff right now, because I have the feeling this would be really annoying otherwise. And Lizardmen. I don't remember if they also have the ice element. Or what. But you guys sure do wonder if Lizardmen is back yet. What he will think of that. Uh, okay. Well, they also seal themselves, as you can see. So they have that going for them. Shield themselves, which I think, uh, you know, a different version of the Lizardman enemy that would show up in a later game would echo. I guess that came from this game. I think if we keep going this way, we're just gonna reach the place where the boss is, and to be quite frank, I'm kinda curious uh, if we are able to go back to Terra Murphy. Okay, yes, we are. And we go through the other uh, passage that was blocked by one of the, the bridge things. Uh, which I think is over here, yes. What will we find over here? Is there anything over on top of that thing? I guess not. Doesn't look like there could be anything there, though. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm not gonna go looking for that right now. Oh no, this is the same room. Alright. Another ice guy. Oh, 
Okay, so... There's an MP Max up here, so it was a good idea to come here. Well, at least it looks like the Lizardmen do have the ice element also, so I don't have to worry about that or anything. I'm guessing if I try to go down here, then that thing is in the way. Oh, now we know. That's how that's gonna work. And we've leveled up. Okay. Level 39 now, so we're gonna be in the low to mid 40s when we beat the game, I guess. And we need to go through the middle part. The lizard man waits. And trick them with weapon jump timing combination. And also get hit by them inadvertently. Because of bad distance gauging, but you know, it's not that it matters or anything when we have this damage absorption thing going on. Uh, evil hands. I don't think the evil hands even hurt you, they just hold you down. Oh no, they do hurt you. <laughs> I guess I must have been thinking of the evil hands in Castlevania 4, you know, the ones that actually do that. Uh, okay, here's the save room. The temperature means the boss is just up ahead. Oh wait, they do hold you down, but they hurt you at the same time. I'm gonna go fight the boss now. I don't think there's anything else in the way that I would bother to, to look into right now, but I do want a specific combination of stuff. I think it's Jupiter and Manticore. Yes, it is. It's one that allows you to have this thing around you, which, you know, much like with the zombie dragons, or not the zombie dragons, I don't think, but there was another one that. Adramalek, that's one. Much with Adramalek. Uh, we're really gonna want to be protected from uh, projectiles during this fight. So here's this lady. Ooh, you were with Dracula in the hole. And Camilla, totally not a misspelled Carmilla. Back in Dracula forth again. Why do you want his return? Turn this world into a living hell? In the year of our Lord, 1847, or whatever year this is, I forgot. But isn't this world hellish already? People are intrigued by darkness and covet chaos and power. They are dirty, self-centered mongrels. Well, I mean, you say that as if that has ever not been the case. Simply wish the world to properly reflect this image. Too more delusional, though, however. And then she's just like, eh. This is how it works, okay? If only you two would embrace the darkness in your soul, then a new world would unfold before you. A whole new world, even. The one who was with you. He was more honest with himself. You haven't heard of him in a while. Even my master approves of him, Teehee. What have you done to Hugh? Well... We're not getting a straight answer, because then she becomes this thing. Which... You know, I can just kind of further confirms that this is, in fact, supposed to be the same Carmilla that you see in other Castlevania games, but... As you can see, she launches a bunch of stuff after you, so you pretty much have to... ...to... ...you know, 
try and hit her as she rides on top of the skull, which has dreadlocks now for some reason. It's not usually how she operates. And you try to avoid her various attacks, such as this giant laser beam that it does sometimes. Well, I do like how this got to the point where this magic... Uh, Well, that was quick. The magic that I'm using to protect myself from the projectiles doesn't even, like, drain my MP to any real level. But yeah, that was... that was challenging, wasn't it? You are too late. The right has already been prepared. Only the full moon is missing. See, we heard the same... same thing from Not Shaft, who was the second boss, several hours ago. It is just a matter of time before the Master has his full power of darkness. Your precious Master and friend will... Will... Shh, I see. So Master and he are in trouble, who could have guessed. But that was Carmilla, the boss of the waterway. And for defeating her we get the Rockwing. Which pretty much lets us do the super jump from Symphony. And it works more or less the same way, except, you know, it doesn't actually drain magic now, for one thing. I think Symphony is the only game in which it does drain magic. Might be wrong about that, but I don't think I am. Actually, I think there's only one, uh, you know, classic Metroidvania game that came out after this that doesn't have the. Well, that came out after Symphony that doesn't have the uh, super jump in it. So let's turn on absorption now of of ice damage and can beat up this lizard man again. So once again, lizard is not here to see it. I guess doesn't get to see to express his opinion on what is happening right now. No, how did that one drop? Is it chainmail again? Yeah. You know, that doesn't look like chainmail, it looks like some kind of green armor, but... I'm pretty sure that's not what chainmail looks like. So, let's save one more time. Could move away from here pretty much immediately, but well, there's some empty parts of the. I can't even know anymore if I'm gonna be hunting down all of the extra HP, MP, max up stuff because I don't know if I'm even gonna need them to finish the game or anything. And you know, unlike unlike hunting all of the extra stuff in like Metroid, for example, you don't really need to complete any particularly special extra challenges or anything to get all that. Just kind of need to find them, like maybe beat off some enemies to get to them, but that's pretty much it. So let's bully the lizard man some more as we wait for a lizard's return. And see what else hold. The only thing, the only other thing that's over here is the place where the boss was. I think too, now that I think about it, I think this is the only Metroidvania game where you don't don't get any kind of bestiary, where you kind of browse through all the different enemy types. Symphony, I, f I forgot to show that off in Symphony, but it did have that. You can go talk to the librarian and he lets you look at a list of all the enemies. I think I might have shown that at some point, but didn't like check it ex extensively after pretty much filling it out or anything like that. Even though I think I was doing some extra stuff in the game after I already beat it. But the game that came out after this one does have a bestiary like that. And the game that came out after that, which is Aria, does have a bestiary, and all the DS ones have one like that, so... And you know, the couple of 3D ones for the PS2 that I'm going to be playing, they also have bestiaries, so... 
pretty much the only one that I'm gonna be uh, playing after that. After this set. Well, the only couple of ones that don't have that are... Uh, Adventure Rebirth, which is a classic style one, so it makes sense not to have one there, but... And, you know, Castlevania Judgment, which is very, very special, shall we say. He also does not have a bestiary, because it doesn't quite operate the same way as most of these do. Gee, I sure do wonder when Lizardman's gonna get back. Hey, Lizardman's back. Just in time to see the last of his kind extinguished. Alright, we can, we can leave now. And we can very highly jump our way out of here. Yes, I am indeed killing your compatriots. I do sure do wonder how that makes you feel. Hey, there's hard max up here. I figured one of these was going to be an optional thing. I don't know if there's any other varieties of Lizardman in this game, but... <laughs> Here we go, this is the back way into the... Into the waterway that I found before. Uh, is there anything else nearby that I want to check out? I think there might be. Let me see. I think some of the enemies might have changed, though. One of the enemies that used to prowl around here. Or a fan of the water dragon style Lizardman. Alright. Well, now the Gorgons are still here. I think I'm kind of OP for them at this point. I guess I can turn on the Venus spell. Not that I need any extra items from this area, I don't think, but... Just for its own sake. Maybe I'll get some potion drops, that'll totally help. I totally won't just be a waste of... Uh, space in my inventory or anything like that. I guess we're dropping by this place one more time. Because apparently there's something in down here that I want. If the unfilled part of the map is any indication. Well, now that we have a... This is where there used to be a platforming puzzle here. But now that we have the, you know, the rock wing... Platforming puzzles are pretty much meaningless. And apparently that wasn't even what I was, uh, you know, missing the means to access anyway. It was this over here. Hey, the poison armor's starting to hits now. That's pretty good. And what is over here, actually? This looks like a longish corridor. Let's uh, HP max up. Oh, why not? I will take that. I do like having more health. It's always a good thing. And now that we actually... got all that stuff, then we can proceed to the next area of the game that we actually have to go to, which is... Well, pretty much a final area of the game that you can explore that's necessary for plot purposes. It's also gonna be hard as balls, from what I recall. So, even with all the extra stuff I have, so... Uh, let's see... I could use... I could, you know, use the super special cheat. I'm gonna try to equip Neptune with another... With the Black Dog card, which I do not have yet. I'm gonna set to my advantage. I think I will do that, because... Fuck it. Like, I think, in, in theory, that's a big in theory. We could access the place where we get the Black Dog card. Right now. So, might as well, you know, pretend that we've already taken the time to grind it and just reap the benefits. Uh, but let's see, where, where, what's the best place to go to reach this place, actually? 
Actually, I think it's the middle, uh, middle war point. I think this game only has the three war points, by the way. It has even less war points than... Uh, and then Symphony did. That one only had five. So I think this is the Metroidvania that, you know... Another dubious distinction that it has is it has the least war points of any Metroidvania. But now that we have the super jump, we can actually find our way to the top of this place. For example, and see what sort of goodies are hidden up here. Well, I see something that I want already. Guess we could have gotten that before by jumping on the brain floats, but I we still would have been missing the double jump anyway, so it would have been a waste. Our yellow HP max increases. And, uh, okay, apparently this room doesn't really lead much farther than that. Also, the moon's kind of cut off in the background there, isn't it? Like, the middle bottom part is kind of angularly cut off. It seems like a bit of a goof. Oh. If there's a power you can get where you can, uh, you know, avoid getting knocked back like that, because, you know, to be quite frank, it is kind of annoying. All right. There's no hidden walls here or anything, so I wonder whether that, like, outcropping is even separate from the others. And let's see. Let's see what the, the top of this part is like now. Well, that looks like it might be a wind armor, I think. I don't think we've fought them yet. But thankfully I do believe we also have the uh, cards necessary to... Uh, ...make them trivial. Let's see. If I combine Neptune with... Uh, I think it's Griffin here. Yeah. Griffin is wind element, so... Try to attack me, please. Thank you. Apparently they're even stronger than the ice armor, so... I'm quite glad that... I have this element available to me. Hey, a potion. <laughs> Even though, like I said, you know, potions are pretty much fucking useless at this point. They only raise, uh, they only raise 20 HP, whereas you have, uh, you have 680 as your maximum HP. Not really gonna help all that much. It's not like the you know, they drop frequently enough where you can have dozens of them in, in your inventory. Like, if, if, that, if they were, you know, that frequent, then it would help, I guess, but... Given that they are not, that's kind of a moot point. Alright, so... That fill in the map? It did, alright. And this is how we get to the final... ...stage of the game, pretty much, the Observation Tower, which... ...as its classic throwback track has, uh... Vampire Killer, because of course why wouldn't it? If you're gonna have a game where most of the music is throwbacks to older Castlevania games, might as well have Vampire Killer in there somewhere. Okay. And also have you know the windows that look like Simon says. You know, the way the wall textures are kind of sparsely alternated here, it's pretty suspicious. Oh, did I get cursed? I did get cursed, that sucks. What if I... you know, I could just use an uncursed potion, but what if I use Mars? What if I use the Mars, uh... Power, can I attack with that? I cannot attack with that, damn it. Alright, I guess I'll use something else then, uh... Like, for example... I will try to attack, but I guess it doesn't let you do that either. Okay. Fine, I'll use the cure curse. I guess it's gonna drop more frequently now because I got more luck. See, now I can do this. I was hoping I was gonna be able to do that while. Oh, I guess you can also, like, 
fish for breakable walls just for god damn it. I don't know if I want to bother with trying to well, I guess I will now. There we are. The other legion the enemy set. As you might have noticed by this point are called Legion and is there supposed to be a reference to the big ball of bodies enemy that you see in a lot of the other games that is called Legion as well, but... You know, in this case, they're like an amalgamation of the Legion and the, uh, the ectoplasm from some of the other games. Even though... oh shit. <laughs> okay, those things do stone damage, I take it. Well, the ectoplasms do curse you, I guess. What am I... I'm not trying to use this, I'm trying to use this. Neptune with the copper trees, I think that's stone element. Oh, and I missed getting hit by that. There we go. Uh, oh, and Minotaurs, oh boy. I'm going to assume that they do dark damage like every other apparently non-elemental enemy does, so... Nope, they don't. Okay. Don't know what kind of damage I do do then. I'm gonna fucking die, so... I'm gonna go ahead and use my healing trick. With Jupiter and Manticore, I think. Hey yeah, are you having fun down there? Watching me get healed slowly while you just toil away at your stuff. There we go. I'm actually curious now, what fucking element are the, the Minotaurs? Don't know, but I guess I'm gonna have to fight them legitimately without assuming that I'll be able to absorb the damage. Let me tell you how much I hate fighting without cheating in these games. Something I simply cannot stand. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. Alright, takes a better count the amount of strikes it takes to kill a Minotaur. Exactly how long this is gonna go on for? I lost count. I wasn't even counting to begin with. There we go. Oh boy, there's a third one. Not to say don't jump like some of the other Minotaurs do. What if I just skip this guy? Okay. Uh, and hard max up, I don't know, seven. Don't think I've hit this guy yet, so let me see if I can count. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten strikes. Insert Dracula Sesame Street joke here. Also, let me heal myself before I proceed. I don't even know if, like, there's a save room nearby or anything, but... You know, this is the point where the game becomes even more sadistic than it's been the whole time. Which is something a bit, you know, non-negligible. You, you could put it that way. Oh boy, here it comes. And then it goes away again. I think I've regenerated enough, uh, enough magic to where I can do this though, so... So, if you'll excuse me, I'll just... use the... you know, 
follow the sensible way of dealing with those guys. And potentially run into more of them as I carry in through the air like this. Oh, they can shoot through the walls, of course. Glad I was able to find out they are getting hit at least. God. And here comes a siren, I think, is what those are. Oh, okay. That's very nice. A siren. I think the evil pillar, sir, might actually be a reference to, you know, that one boss from Castlevania Bloodlines that was the optical illusion with the pillars, but, you know, that might be a stretch. I don't know if that's actually the case or not. Alright. I'm going to assume that there's going to be, that there's nothing, um, nothing hidden there. I could find out very easily by doing this, but okay, apparently there is nothing hidden there after all. Oops. Oh shit, I almost got hit by that. As I poorly gauged how quickly that thing was turning. Okay, I found an actual hidden wall now. Right there is Cataplepus, the wall that actually Breathes uh, petrific petrification clouds that's actually supposed to, as per mythology, I think. What mythology? I don't know, but it's not the only one that I've seen with that name that does that. It's pretty much what I'm trying to say. Maybe it's more folklore than mythology. And then we have the question what's the difference? Oh boy. Also, watch out for these very conspicuous holes in the, the parts where you can stand. Or if I recall, there should be a save point. Here we go, right here. And... let's see... This place shouldn't be that really terribly big, but... You know, the density of enemies that kill you dead in it, it's kind of the problem with it. Back the attack until she got sight of me. Alrighty. Over here is oh boy, more of those fuckers from Symphony that I hated. Back for everybody's enjoyment. Except mine, I guess. And down here we got like a bunch of evil pillars and uh, you know a place that's conspicuously empty. So pretty much means that there has to be something here. And indeed there is. You know, I could experiment to try to see what element the Minotaur's attack is. Or I could just, you know, power through all of them. That works too. Okay, I'm gonna kill them for the experience, I guess, and... Oh god. And then I will just go back to the save room. There we go. See, that turned out to be worth it in the end, isn't that great? So let's see how many hits it takes now. One. Okay, let me do two extra damage. Two. Three. Or five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, it takes one less hit to kill them now. That clearly is worth it quite a bit. Okay, I can hit them twice in one go, that'll help, I guess. But I can unless I get not careful enough, and that happens, I guess. 
course, you can see how frequent that is likely to happen given how clumsy I am. armor. Okay, that's a thing that drops from the... That dropped from the, um... The ice armor a bunch of times. So I already have a bunch of those. Actually, I think I've been wearing one of those, if I recall. Yep, I have. So I probably could be taking even more damage from all these attacks now. But I'm not. So let's actually continue now, I guess. Okay. So at the very least, these uh, these dudes don't come all the way over here. They stop just short of that. So I can't stand in the threshold and not have to worry about them knocking me out of the room like like they did in Symphony. You know that was fun times, wasn't it? Half knights who are I think headless now for some reason, even though they were in Symphony. Let me try to use this. There we go. Dolahan. I think I hadn't realized that that's what the, um, the enemy text, I mean, the enemy name text said. Dolahans have complete horses. Yeah, if I'm t I think Dolahans are supposed to be, you know, the only really distinguishing features that they have no heads. Oh, damn it. Okay, that one's done. So I'll try running past this one. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> well, the heat shade is... This has not been upgraded since... I showed up in the clock tower, because I can just kill you in one hit. Hanabudula hands that have heads but are not necessarily attached or come off at will. See, that's pretty much Castlevania Dola hands. And there was a boss like that in Rondo called. Uh, pretty sure it was supposed to be called Dola Hand, but the, the in game text calls it Gansian for whatever reason. Chean, Kean, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. If it's even an English, Welsh, Celtic word or whatever. And, uh, you know, this, that won't be the last of the dollar handsets. Our actual dollar handsets show up in these games, so... Oh boy. Boy, can I please get un on Frosty? There we go. See, this is what happens when you try to fight uh, frost, frost enemies. Frost enemies, yes, that's only what I was going to say. Try to fight those kinds of enemies. Oh, shit, okay. Alra wounds that attack pretty much the same way that it, they do in uh, in Symphony, but in Symphony they were called Venus weeds for some reason, even though they're supposed to be called Alra wounds. So let's just go ahead and make make ourselves immune to blood damage. I think that's the sensible thing to do. I'm trying to cure this thing without. Wow. Realize how little damage it takes. Oh. Oh boy, there's another demon that shoots a bunch of uh, projectiles there, but luckily there's apparently. Oh wait, what? 99. Okay, I don't know what changed that makes made me do more damage, but okay. Oh, demon lord. That's what that one's called. Which it's gonna take like 10 hits to kill too. Well, close enough, I'm bit, I'm, I'm sure, whatever, however many that was. Oh boy. And there's another one there. At least if, if you stay at a good, at a good distance, you can... Okay, I guess you have to magic rope, hit it from... From pretty close by. The magic robe I'm guessing is for this. Oh, it's better than uh, better than the steel armor. So thank you very much. I'll absolutely take that. Oh, 
Okay, can hit you if you just stand there. I mean, why wouldn't it hit? Why wouldn't it hit you if you just stand there? But okay, it does five less damage now with that new armor. And we came all the way here for an MP max up, which I think I'll take advantage of the fact that it refilled my MP by using my healing trick again. And I think with the improved intelligence, this you know this trick is actually better because your MP recovers faster the more intelligence you have. You don't have mind. Yeah, you don't have mind in this game, so... You only have four stats. Strength, defense, intelligence, and luck, so intelligence also... also affects how quickly your MP regenerates, I guess. Blech. I think mind is usually the one that does that in RPG setups. Oh, hey, also we got a big theater here theater for those who come to watch Dracula get resurrected, I guess. You know, this isn't even Dracula's castle, as we established at the start of the game. This is uh, some random Austrian castle that I guess is Carmilla's castle. Also, there are dark armors up there, so... I'm gonna go ahead and be prudent and equip my secret weapon again. the immunity to dark attacks. So I'm pretty sure they hurt you quite a lot if you are not prepared for that. And as you can see they have a lot of reach so it would be kind of silly not to prepare yourself for that. And they turn around in between shots so it's something you can like do with some enemies like the demons where you get behind them when they started firing and you pretty much don't have to worry about dodging or anything. Oh boy, here's another one. Uh, Alright, I need to do this to turn that back on. Well, Dark Armor are kind of the... oh, double grips. Kind of one of the big reasons why you're so likely to die in this stage. What is double grips? Your power is released when both are equipped. Okay, so I need at least two of those to get more power, I guess. So just one of them is useless. have the darkness immunity turned on, and I do, so I guess if you're very wily you can if you're very wily you can just jump over it or duck under the projectiles at the dark armor shoots, but I, know, I still think they're way too oversized to where they could be considered reasonable. It could be considered reasonable to do that. Hmm. So I think we're coming up on the boss here, actually. We're pretty much at the apex of the castle, as you can see. So we'll be fighting the penultimate boss of the game in just a little bit. Gonna kill this bull, though, first. And the legion heads are over there. Oh god, no. Thank you very much if, um... You know, you'll excuse me, rather, if I don't want to get cursed again. Oh, did I? Okay, they actually gonna absorb, uh, absorb the legion damage with dark protection, I guess. I guess that makes sense. I don't know, for some reason I thought you would have to have some kind of separate thing, even though... Even though curse... There's no curse element or anything, so... It would make sense that if it had to be any other element, it would be dark. I think we're about to... Actually, no, hang on a minute. I forgot about... There's one more thing we gotta deal with before we get to the boss here. Uh. 
Ouch. Hold out. She can't become a problem when you can't even get on the platforms you need to be on to fight the enemies. You know what, why... Why don't I just run past this guy as well? I was gonna say, because I'm just gonna be able to... Or just gonna end up running back this way later. Anyway. And yeah, there's the boss gate. We're not gonna fight the boss yet, because we have not saved. But, okay. It's kind of a... Uh, kind of... Uh, oh, we got another notification. I surely wonder what that was. Kind of uh, necessary or good that we got that on the map. I think the hardest non-boss enemy of the game is right here. Yep, it's a devil. Probably wouldn't be remiss to assume that it's the devil either, because this is... Uh, this would pretty much be murdering me right now if I didn't have dark protection. I'm actually kind of wondering whether or not I'm gonna be... Well, my dark protection is about to run out, because I'm gonna... Yep. I'm out of MP. Am I even gonna be able to kill this guy? Oh god. I can see how much damage that does. Look at this, because I think he has a ton of health, as you can like, maybe be able to guess. Then, as you can see, his attacks do quite a bit of damage each, and. Yeah, I'm gonna have to turn this back on, or else I'm gonna die. Gonna... No. So there's only one of these in the game. Uh, I, f I think there's only one of these. Okay, I killed him. Well, thank goodness for that. There's only one of these that you can find, like, exploring here, but... Oh, whoops, I get a, a better equip there. I think you can survive if I just have this equipped, but... Uh, there's only one of these that you can find... Uh, in this area, like out in the open, I guess. But there's also an arena stage later on. Oh, here's another. Okay, never mind, there are four war points, not three. There's an arena stage you can find later where. I think uh, that guy's like the final enemy or something, I don't know. Not sure if that's the case, but I know. I think there is at least one of those in there. I think there's just one though. But the others are pretty much the only places where you find that guy. And I think because he was such a difficult enemy, he would pretty much go on to become a recurring boss slash enemy type devil, that is. Oh boy, wind... Uh, wind... demon, I'm guessing. Hang on a minute, let me... Yep, wind demon. Haven't killed any of these guys yet, so... Go ahead and. Oh, for fuck's sake. Wait for him to come down here, maybe. Well, thank goodness for the Neptune card, because I would really be in a world of hurt if it wasn't for that right now. But, well, I will be anyway. I probably, but. In just a bit when we get to the boss. And let's see. I think you can go to the arena before even you can go to the last area, though. Yeah, that's a separate thing. It's off to the off in the top right, that kind of gap that we haven't explored. In the top right, I think that's where the arena is. It's an optional area, but... Might, as, might go check it out, but I do want to go kill the boss of these, uh, of these next. You know, the place that you actually have to explore first. So let's let's go ahead and make ourselves make ourselves go through that. Actually, I might use save states as a save since you know it's such a long run between the save point and the boss. Oops. Hang on. Oh wait a minute! I'm not even warping to the right place. Not paying attention again. There we go. What 
also kind of a funny thing about the Terraria comment you just made, Lizard. It's pretty much uh, having to do with games getting told Metroidvanias and all that. Where you, well, you can kind of see, I don't know, I think I... The thing is about Metroidvania, I guess, as a term, is that... Uh, I think the kind of game that I consider Metroidvania in the purest sense, you know, to use that. And to sound like an elitist, which I totally am, and I'm totally not just saying that in jest. Uh, I think Metroidvania for me personally is like um, a game like Symphony, for example, where, you know, you got the Castlevania kind of action and difficulty and setting and exploration, uh, but you also have a variety of weapons to choose from, that's a thing that... Uh, you know, because... Well, I don't know about the setting, because you can... A lot of the games called Metroidvania are pretty much similar in gameplay, but... But, um... You can have a different sort of setting most of the time, they don't uh, adhere to the gothic... fantasy horror stuff that these... Uh, you know, mythology that these games draw from, but... I think the whole thing with the exploration and, uh... You know, that whole style of gameplay was a lot more Metroid than Castlevania, especially the fact with only having one primary weapon. I think that's kind of the X factor that separates, Met you know, Metroid... the Metroid part of, uh, Metroidvania from the rest. Where you do exploration and you only have one weapon, pretty much. I think having the variety of weapons is something that I... Well, that's not even in this game, for example, but it's in Symphony, it's in Area of Sorrow, and it's in pretty much every Metroidvania that came since, which isn't saying much, because there weren't that many after, but... I don't know, that's one aspect that... I think I miss from those games. I don't really see very often, and that I guess I'm gonna have to wait for fucking... for Bloodstained to able to experience again, but uh, let's go fight the boss now that our magic has uh, regenerated and I've just been stalling here for a while. Hey, it's you again, so you finally arrived. You're okay and totally not mind-controlled, even though Carmilla kind of, uh, kind of suggested that before. I am superior to you. I will... Defeat you to probe myself to father. You're being controlled by Carmilla? No, by Dracula, since Carmilla's kind of dead now, you know, that... There's that little detail, so... He was kind of like this game's closest thing you get to a mirror match, where... It's someone who's human-sized and who has a lot of your own weapons and whatnot. And I'm kind of wondering, actually, if... Uh, what are some powers that you would be able to get with DSS stuff, I guess? Oh, but he does more damage than you, as you might expect, and has a lot more health, because that's just how the, the bosses in this work. Can't have a silly exception to balance or anything, make it too easy. Oh yeah, he can throw the knives too, so I'm kind of wondering, actually, if, uh, if I am to invoke something as broken as a summon. How exactly will that work in this fight? Oh, it will work. Okay, it will work really well, actually. And uh, something I'm kind of curious about too is like if I set my power to dark absorption again. Okay, that doesn't work. But okay, that doesn't work either. So I guess you can't absorb boss attacks. Maybe that's fine. So let's just spam this until we run out of magic, I guess, and then we'll figure out what else to do. Oh god, he's doing a Richter Belmont's move, I think. Oh, that was a bit of a waste, since he has a bunch of iframes there, but this is powered up mode, I guess, where he has glowing red stuff. You know, if this is one of those bosses where if you challenge yourself to fight him without uh, the aid of special powers like this, it's actually a giant pain, so... It's not impossible or anything, it's actually a pretty good challenge, but... You know, I'm known for for taking on the full Castlevania challenge, am I not? Oh, there we go. Hold up twice from that. Stop you. I don't want to hurt you. Period. Hugh. 
I don't know. Maybe he's talking to you, the player, when he says stop Hugh because he doesn't say stop comma Hugh, even though I'm pretty sure. Actually, I don't know. Are there, are there even commas in the text source for this? I don't know. Yes, there are. See, there's one right there. So I don't know where that typo came from. Nathan, moan parenthesis. I'm... I'm alright now. Okay, then I just got beat up, but... I was envious of you, our rival. When father named you the successor, I was afraid that I was worthless. I wanted, needed the recognition. Probably was the dark weakness that father saw. In my soul, why he chose you. Stop it, Hugh. Again, you, you need a comma there, but... I, I'm actually not sure how to interpret that without comma. It's alright, even I realize now that father was right in his decision. Allow me to self-pity for now. It's okay if you say so. And help father, so he, so he knows that we're not even done yet, and he's not gonna help out. He's just gonna sit there for the rest of the game, I guess. So this is the throne room, I guess. It's got a, got a funky face there in the background. And the big throne that is never sat upon by anybody. But here we go, we got the last key. The key to open the door to where the right will take place. So we can go fight Dracula now. Pretty much. Not sure if there's anything else we want to um, do in the meantime, actually. Because there's pretty much the only thing left in the g oh, oops. Left to do in the game. And I'm pretty confident that we can do it. I don't know, the, f the fight against Dracula is actually pretty tough in this game. At least the second phase is. First phase is kind of easy from what I recall. But the second phase is uh, one of those things that is actually pretty memorable. What did he drop? He dropped platinum armor. Is that better than the the magic robe? No, it isn't. Okay, so I'm actually, I actually got really lucky with the magic robe drop. Also, as you might have noticed, this is one of the points where it's most egregious that um, because you don't get any um, any kind of healing after beating a boss, it's actually very easy to beat you know that boss, who's actually pretty difficult if you don't spam. Uh, DSS shit like I do, and you are on your way back to the save room, to a save room, you know, there's not any save rooms close by there, which is kind of an inconvenience, and you just die, because you're assaulted by the devil. Because you refuse to use the super broken card combinations, like I use. Uh, let's see, let me see if I can make it past this hole without getting hit. There we are. And now there's pretty much only two things left to check out. You know, assuming you don't want to um, go grind all the stuff that you're missing, like items and the cards and such, which actually I don't even remember. Where do, where do you get the card that comes before Uranus? Let me... Uh. Look this up real quick. Circle of the Moon, yes. Hmm. <laughs> All right, so. So I can't find any links to where this is. What points with that? Uh, DSS, here we go. Uh, Pluto, Uranus, Saturn. I'm missing Saturn. Who I don't know where you... Oh, you can make it... You can somewhat familiar with the Saturn. Okay. <laughs> I guess we'll try it out, even, though, even if we don't have the card yet, see what it does. 
see what it does. Uh, well, first we need to... Let's see, oops, hang on, we need to set up something here first, of all. So let's see what the familiars are, shall we? We can summon a bat. Oh, it's kind of a cute chubby bat. Let's see what it does, if anything. Oh, it shoots a fireball when we attack. So it's kind of like the Baton Symphony, I guess. Well, the Baton Symphony, when we you know, are in Batroom and shoot a fireball also, so... See what this one does. This one summons a ghost by the looks of it. Spooky ghost who okay it does. Actually that also works like a ghost in Symphony. But it's a lot more effective from what I can see. I don't know if unfortunately I don't know if we can even summon the or level up the familiars in this, so it's kind of an issue. If we use Mandragora then we summon an owl. Okay, that's new. That's new, but it's, it's not the only game where you can summon one, I don't think. It's not really doing anything right now. Oh, it can. Oh, it spits stuff. Okay, when you attack. And with Golem we can summon what? We can summon... Okay, didn't forget to switch to this thing. Can summon an eel, by the looks of it. Oh, does decent damage, also by the looks of it. Just rams into enemies. Oops. Uh, let's see. And we summon a Medusa head, okay, that's you. I think that's... Uh, actually, I think some of these were reused in... Um, come on. There's, there's like a spooky face, I just saw that when it attacks. Attacks by throwing um, throwing rocks out of its mouth, I guess. I think some of these summons were pretty much uh, reused for uh, Order of Ecclesia, which was one of the last Metroidvanias released. Well, let me go ahead and go back in the save room because I don't want to die. Let's see what the next one is. It's just a cloud of poison, I guess. I guess it's like it's supposed to be like the mist form in Symphony of the Night. That's it's a little bit weird, though. Get a cloud of poison. I guess it makes sense since it's Manticore. With Griffin, we get what? We get a fairy. Oh, is it like the fairy in Symphony where it heals you? Maybe. Oh no, it actually attacks. Okay. So we don't get a healer a companion in this game, it doesn't look like Botula and Red are gonna be mad. And then we'll get a few more. Oops. Okay, I saved it, I think. Um, and no, not Mandragorman. Thunderbird. Well, Thunderbird summons an actual Thunderbird, okay. Well, a bird that's got thunder in its wings at any rate. Looks more like a crow. Uh, let's see what else we got. With unicorn, it's an angel. A little angel thing, I guess. And it also attacks instead of healing. Alright, so... Well, it's not like they implemented a thing for... There's like special items that the uh, companion can use to heal, like in Symphony. I think like that, so it actually makes sense to keep it. Yeah, I guess so. Little uh, shoots arrows, so I guess it makes sense to call it Cupid. Oh shit. Well, let's see what the last one is. Be Black Dog, and it's a um, little tiny devil imp. So it's like the one in Symphony, I guess. Probably attacks enemies by like stabbing them or something. See, it does, well, maybe it doesn't do anything. It doesn't seem to be right now. Maybe it just trolls you, I don't know. We'll see a high red bear again. Well, one more thing we could check out, I guess. 
our filthy cheats is um, see what the transformation sucks. I think that's what the Pluto card does, which you know we don't have. It transforms you into something. No, it doesn't. All right. Actually, have no idea what it does then. So um, all the things should be active right now. What if we try that with a different sub card? Oops, hang on. Okay, I officially have no idea what this does. Let me let me consult to see what this does. Pluto has the potential of special. Okay, so it's actually very, very very vague what that even does. So the Pluto card, uh, okay, you can bestow a number of strange and various effects on Nathan. You can unleash the item crush with Salamander. You can uh, throw double sub weapons with Serpent, so it's like the Roman numeral 2. With Manticore, uh, sub weapons use MP instead of hearts. Griffin, uh, speed is increased, but not the jump distance. With Thunderbird, I guess I'll try that out. Strength is based on the total, is increased based on the total playtime. Okay. With Unicorn, uh, it makes. Oh, you can become invincible with Unicorn, okay. And with Black Dog, he transforms into a skeleton, which we've already seen. I guess I'll try out the. Um, Thunderbird special. Hmm. That doesn't look like it's. Oh, wait, this is the. Uh, you know, this isn't the one that. Uh, is that. Did I read that right or what? Thunderbird is. Uh, oh no, that's a strength one. The Griffin is the one that makes you. Okay, faster. I'm gonna try that now. Okay, I'm gonna go fast, I guess. So I guess we can certainly use the invincibility power. I guess to... Well, for various purposes, but let me see. Let me try it out, I guess. It's Unicorn and Pluto, which we don't have, but... We don't have either of those, but we can still use that. This filthy cheat of ours. Okay, so it uses up magic very quickly, I see. So probably shouldn't have used that too much. Let me see. Okay, there's actually no, I just remember there's another uh, I think there's another warp room that you can find that's very close to the arena from what I recall. Hey, guess what? I can't take damage now, but I also can't hurt anyone, so I guess I want to use that too much unless I'm in uh, parts where the enemies are plentiful. Like, could have used that to escape the devil a lot more easily back in the other... Uh, in the other uh, section. So, hang on a minute. Let me transport myself, I think, to the... Yeah, this place is the closest place. The chapel tower. I think I will use the unicorn power here because fucking level 43 now. I want to deal with the uh, blood swords. I guess I don't really need to deal deal with them either since I have the you know the grip upright. Oh, need to cheat. Just leisurely stroll past all of these guys without, you know, being annoyed by them. Certainly a rarity. Uh, make it past the thing. Uh, look over here. I think there should be. There's probably going to be some hidden rooms to fill the uh, the one tile the one tile wide gaps in the map. 
Okay, might as well save here to replenish my MP. I think there's something we want from over here that's like a... Somehow filled out the other... Oh wait, no, not here. Somewhere nearby though, from the recall, let me check the map. Uh, no, it's at the bottom of the chapel tower, so I kind of goofed. Oh well, I mean... I think I pretty much assigned to finishing the game with uh, the stuff I have right now and not really bothering to get more. I should be able to do that. I just actually killed some enemies now, I guess. Uh, we can't just go straight over there, of course. We need to go around. Or do we? Because now that we can jump really high, we can skip out a big part of this room, I think. Or can we? Okay. There. I did it. There's no secret here, that's weird. Alright, let's try going to the, uh, the bottom left here, I guess, if we can. Which we probably can't, because it's gonna be like a. Uh, Get a thing which we uh, slide through, but it doesn't work from this side. So let's search for the other exit to this room. Ah, damn it. Well, I get cursed, so I guess I'm not killing anyone now. Alright, we couldn't have gotten past this before because we couldn't move the box, but now we can. It's incredible how things change. Alright. Oh boy, and... I think I do want to, you know, be able to attack for that, so let me wait this curse out, and there we go. Here's where Jaguar, let's see. How swiftly he attacks. He attacks pretty swiftly, but he also goes down pretty swiftly. Uh, where Tiger and where Jaguar, I think, would be like. show up again in Area of Sorrow. Kind of a. recurring thing. Well, at least to that extent. I think where Tiger and where Jaguar might also have been based on some of the enemies from uh, fucking Castlevania 64. You know. I wouldn't say that's impossible, given that this game already has a couple of third influences from Castlevania 64, like the music. Well, may maybe the music. A couple of tracks, at least. Alright. Hmm. Hmm. I'm actually kind of wondering, because... I don't remember if this was supposed to be quite this... quite this much of a detour. I guess we'll find out where this goes at any rate. Uh, let's see... We might as well check it out. Okay, here's the warp room. Final warp room of the game, I think. Could have gotten it before, but... Okay, this is... The Place where you are sure to die. Let me see if I can explore a little bit and then I will turn on my invincibility. Yes, I don't believe I'm going to actually tackle this place because it's just. Yeah. Better get to max level before even attempting it, pretty much. Legions and. That thing. That we only saw for a moment, but that is terrible. Don't even remember what it's called, and I don't really want to find out. 
Did we fill out this place? We do not fill out this place. Alright. Now that we fill out this place, we do not yet. There we go. Gotta go here and get the HP max up or not, because we can't even interact with that when we have invincibility turned on. How about it? As you can see, we have to deal with this uh, fallen angel if we go here and. Doing so is not fun. There. Because of those orbs of energy that are kind of impossible to dissipate. Uh, but we can also find this place, the battle arena. Which I think uh, if you're in here you can't use DSS powers or anything like that. You do get your choice of sub-weapon though. Step beyond will be to test your ability in the battle arena. Your mind power will be drained, you will not be able to use DSS. Once you enter, you will not be able to leave until all are defeated. Though you may be rewarded for your efforts, so I'm gonna go make a safe state right here. Because I don't think I'm gonna clear this. But yeah, we can. Oh shit. Okay, so the, I'm pretty sure the enemies are stronger too, because that werewolf should have died in one hit. Pretty sure. This guy takes more than two hits, even though he took only two hits when we killed him right back then. I'm pretty sure the background here is supposed to be based on the boss arena of the Colosseum in uh, Symphony of the Night, where you fight the Minotaur and the Werewolf. And Richter's in the background, like, ha ha ha, I'm evil now for some reason. Have fun f figuring that one out. So yeah, it's not really... I don't know. Well, it doesn't really help that there's no music and... This place is pretty much... Let's, let's see you get through this difficult test game's enemies without any help from the broken magic system. Which I love to abuse. So there's only so much I can accomplish in here. Oh shit, Wind Demon. Well, I mean, the... The wind, the enemy's attacks are also pretty broken, like this guy's little wind blade things that pretty much just follow you around. And there's another one, and you can see how much just one of them is taking to die, so I don't think this is gonna end well for me. At least you get to see what the game over screen looks like again, I guess. Yep. Game over. With this music that I don't think... Well, actually, wait a minute. If you continue, where do you continue? Oh. <laughs> yeah, no. That's right. He actually does send you back to a save point. I thought for some reason it would, like, send you... Put this as a checkpoint or something. But, yeah. I can't be bothering with that because I think all you get for... Um, oops. I turned into a skeleton. What, what a goof. Okay. This is what I was trying to do. Uh. Uh, what, what else was I gonna say? Pretty much what you get for going through the entirety of the battle arena is like a uh, super armor or something. That's probably not gonna help you that much at that point because you pretty much you know finished conquering the entire game by the time you got that. So, so now I'm gonna go beat the game now. Actually, I don't know why I'm even going this way since the warp room is back there. <laughs> Alright. Can't believe I died. Well, I died once already, so it's... And I didn't load state when that happened, so this is, this is no longer a no-death run, I guess you could say. Doesn't qualify for that anymore. So, uh, I'm trying to figure out, actually. Okay, here we go. We're actually right next to the... Right next to the final boss here, right now. I don't know if uh, you might remember this place from the very start of the game where Dracula got resurrected. And then this door, which we weren't able to open until now. So we end up here in the ceremonial room, which is where the final challenge of the game takes place and where you can find an extra HP max up that I actually forgot about before we came here. And I think, uh, yeah, there's no save rooms here, so you're gonna have to go back. 
gonna have to go back to another save room. To uh, prepare for this. The final challenge. We can make, make a couple of additional save states too, because actually this is the right way, hang on. To go up to the top here and then in order to reach there, I need to go around first. Oh. So, uh, okay, I'm pretty far away from the next level up. I was gonna say, like, can I somehow grind a few enemies and get yet another level before I do the final challenge, but no. Alright, let's... Let's go ahead and... Save just in case. Seems to give me a couple of extra save states, so so I don't have to redo too much if stuff goes goofed. Let's quickly run back over to where the other thing was. Oh right, I can't attack these guys. Well, I think I'll keep the thing on just in case, just so I can get through with full health. I mean, I can just use the healing spell that I had recover my health, uh, but eh, I don't know. Oh yeah, hang on a minute, something else we can discover, but this is the best time to do this clearly is, uh, something else we can discover is there's a secret passageway somewhere along this wall, I think, here in this very, very giant fall. And, you know, I remember this now because there's actually something there, that I don't think I was able to. There we go to unlock ever, but it's pretty. Oh, there's an HP max up. I guess we can use that. But there's also this thing up here with a suicidal skeleton guy. That the only way to kill him is with uh, is with the item crash. Oh yeah, the item crash. That's something that I forgot to do completely with the plural card. I guess I can show it off now. I guess. Hang on, just gonna or show it off during the fight. Pluto and Salamander is how you do that, I think. Pluto and Salamander. Well, let's walk into the fight with Dracula. Before I show it off, so let me get up here again and... Save state so that I don't have to redo stuff. And enter the final challenge of the game. Hmm, it's Dracula Hopkins again. You've done well to come so far. And the master is all tied up there. He's been like that the entire game, I guess. The time for the right is upon us. Your soul will become ours as well, I guess. Dracula's using the royal we there for some reason, even though he pretty much never uses it in any other context. Master, are you alright? What an emotional display, but do not fool yourself. Even you must have darkness upon your soul. To be superior, to be honored for your singular accomplishments, to be loved by all, to get the glory even at the expense of others, that is what your friend craved. I just increased that desire, that power. You despicable blight. How dare you toy with the soul, I'll get you for that, you whippersnapper. Oop, hang on. I'm gonna try out the, uh, the item crush, but I need to do this, there we go. Now until we get Dance of Illusions again. Oh, I probably should have stood next to him when I did that, but yeah, that's pretty much the same as with Richter. So, we get Dance of Illusions for this, pretty much the same as... Uh, it's actually a really easy fight if you just get behind him before he attacks. Which, as you might imagine, is phenomenally easy to do with, the, with how not tall he is in this game and the... Um, well, as he attacks, I guess. Unless he does that attack. <laughs> does have a measure against that, I guess. Let me try actually hitting him with this now. There we go. Hey, it worked. So it's another remixed version of Dance of Illusions, I guess, which is... As I may have mentioned, my second, my second favorite uh, Dracula battle theme. My favorite one is actually coming up here, after we're done with this part of the fight. Oh, okay. Not hit by the hand, not even by the bats that time. Unfortunately, I think it's gotten to the point where we can't 
use the elemental absorption to our advantage because it's a boss. Ah shit. I don't know, maybe with this uh, Neptune and no Neptune and Thunderbird. What happens if I run into one of these guys? Well, could get to find out. What if I absorb like the bats at his butt for a problem? It's blue bats, so. I'm guessing it's gonna be ice. Yep, I can absorb that. So, pff, I can you absorb his attacks even? I guess it would be better to keep Neptune and Thunderbird in for when he does that, because that's pretty much the only one that's difficult to avoid. And all the others should pretty much just jump over him. There we go. I didn't really heal all that much, but at least I did manage to. Ah, shit. I do fail to get the running to work before I jumped over him. And... There we go. Level up. It's gonna be so helpful now. Let me see if I can heal a, li a little bit before I... The thing advances. Mm, uh, damn it, I didn't manage. Oh well. Power, I need my full power. Huh? Oh yeah, you actually, you actually get a checkpoint here, I forgot. You can leave and come back if you want. Chase him, don't let him escape. I'll take care of father, you go after him. Get mustered to safety, so... Yeah, I guess you do, uh... Nathan banish Dracula and then make sure you get out. You know, it's not like we didn't already understand that's what we had to do, but... Yeah, you can leave and come back and that thing will still be there, so let me... Let me go ahead and uh, use my healing power real quick. Because the final battle with Dracula is about to begin here. There we go. Oh, I'm making another save state. And I'm gonna try to remember exactly what the... Uh, well, I need to use a couple of different DSS stuff, I think. First one I want is Jupiter and Manticore, so I can get a cloud of poison, and after that I will use summons, pretty much. So, here we go. So what could the final form be? Alright, it's something out of HR Giger's worst nightmares. Even more so than... Well, I don't know if it's even more so than in Symphony or not, but... Or at least we get Proof of Blood, which is... Uh, as the boss theme, which is my favorite Dracula boss theme. And again, it's kind of a shame that... It's one of those themes that's pretty much got never remixed into a different game. St I still don't know how to dodge that meteor attack. Oh, here we go. I can... Use this uh, thing to remove those uh, attacks. And as you might expect from you know a boss at this stage, he does in fact oh shit. Well sometimes poison cloud helps, sometimes he just fails to do a job. Well his attacks are very, very murdery. Oh god, I got poisoned what? Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Actually, I think it might be good to use the cross here. <laughs> I'm forgetting about that for some reason. I pretty much aim for the eyeball and get a bunch of hits in at once. Oh shit. Uh, I still don't know how to dodge that though, like I said. So let's go back in time to this point and... Let me try something actually. Uh, I do want to have I do want to have this ready, but I kinda want to see if I can absorb the meteor somehow. Because I really don't see how to dodge that reliably. Oh shit. Okay, I just discovered something unfortunate, I guess. And I got poisoned. That's also unfortunate, but apparently the The 
cell weapon keeps moving on the screen even if everything else is frozen because of the whole, you know... Oh shit, then I was trying to... Uh, you can get hit by the laser before the big hole in the fire rises up, I guess. That sucks. No, oh, here we go, hang on. Let me see if I can... absorb the fire damage from the meteors, or if I can't. Nope, I can't. So I still don't know what to do when the meteors come down, because it's like... That's the one that absolutely destroys you. Alright. So I could also summon the unicorn, which is the one that... Um, that heals you. Oh. Well, I sure don't want to get poisoned by these things, so... There we go. I think I found the optimal distance to stand at, too. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Better not get hit by these meteors, because I don't fucking know how to... There we go. Just gotta get lucky, I guess. Oh, well. Yep. I saw that coming, but I couldn't react fast enough. So let's see exactly what happens now. Okay, I can actually... Because I should. There we go. So I guess I can avoid the laser and the meteors, which I don't know if I'm gonna be able to since here they come again. Oh boy. Oh. Of course, he retracted that eye. As soon as I got him. Oh shit, here we go. One more time. Oh wait a minute, we... I think I managed to get him to the second form, because he's, uh, well, the second phase, because he's, uh... need to change my cards now. Uranus and Thunderbird, I think. He's glowing like that, and now his attacks pretty much consist of dashing at you like that. Oh shit, and they do a ton of damage if you manage to hit. Uh, but then this happens. Oh shit, I need to turn this on, that's right. Uh, then you summon the Thunderbird, and it's kind of a waste because there we go, I need to hurt his eye, which is surrounded by the bats there. Shit, okay. Please. Oh shit, there we go. There. And now I would need the eye to appear, please. There we go. I haven't been using any healing, but I kind of wish, I kind of wonder if uh, I'm going to be able to get through the rest of these without healing it. Oh god, I know I fucking died. <laughs> hmm. There is that little detail where I need to time the, time the uh, Thunderbird summon so that it uh, can just also use cockatrice, I think, but Thunderbird is the one that I'm used to using. Time that so that you're not vulnerable when... Oh boy, he starts out with the meteors, that's a great start. I don't know, maybe I can use like a peeling item. I don't, know. I don't even know what I have that, that would help. Uh, let's see what I have. I have meat, one meat, and seven potions, I guess. Use those for what it's worth. There we go. I'll actually be able to make it now. Alright, I made it to the second phase, relatively unharmed because of my, my audacity to use uh, healing stuff. So let me prepare as I st stand on this platform right here. <laughs> and wait for him, him to prepare as well. Oh, there we go. 
I gotta get him to appear and then gotta get this thing uh, done twice I think. And only twice, that's the only amount of times I can do it. With reasonably safety where he will not uh, you know, appear to attack me again after I'm vulnerable. There we go. And you don't hope I don't run out of magic while I'm trying to do this, that will also help. Oh, there we go, I think I did it. I took a couple of rounds. But I, it looks like we won the game. a wasted effort. I will never be truly gone. So long as there is darkness and desire in the soul of man, I will continue to be revived. And we will be there to stop you, you can bet on that, except you know, I'm a protagonist from a non-canon timeline that's never going to show up again or be referenced again. There's that little detail. So there goes the castle with all the frames of animation as it collapses. Like it even looks like they tried to make this scene look as much as possible like the final scene from Symphony before the credits. Master, are you well? Nathan, thank you, you did well. You have become a hunter in your own right. Sure as hell doesn't look like there will be a new Castlevania, so I guess Dracula's never coming back now. Thanks, I guess Konami has successfully eradicated evil from the soul of man. Your training must begin anew, I know father. I will train... No, he said I know father, like I know who father is, not I know comma father. I will train like I was born to become worthy, alright. Hey Nathan, if you become soft, I'll take over for you. I look forward to challenge you, alright. Guess that's it. And now here comes this music, which was the mysterious ending theme for that uh, mic game demo that I made once. And I even forgot where I got it from, but it was from here. Producer was Koji, I guess Koji Igarashi. So time for Circle of the Moon's greatest hits. System program and all these bosses that were totally fun to fight, not like you know the first time playing it's not like you're struggling with how weird the controls are compared to pretty much every other Castlevania or anything. What your uh, Circle of the Moon is? It's probably, I don't know, honestly, the, it might be kind of weird where I start where I start off by saying this, but I don't know if it's my first or second most disliked uh, Metroidvania after competing with the one that comes after this, which is Harmony of Dissonance. Which might be weird saying that, but. I don't mean that in the sense that I think this is a bad game, but just that I think it's one of the least polished ones, along with Harmony of the Silence, which I will be playing after this. But that's not to say that it's not good, I mean, I enjoy. I enjoy it for what it's worth. You know, it's got a pretty good challenge, it's, you know, I pretty much agreed upon to be the most difficult Metroidvania. For that reason. Even though you can, you know, as I demonstrated, you can pretty much break it by discovering the the best DSS combos and also trying out the other game modes. So, whether it's for the challenge or for the, uh, you know, the fun you can have with it by breaking everything, much like you can do in Symphony and some of the other ones, it's... Not quite as good as some of those other ones, but still not bad. Pretty good thing in its own right, I see. So now you can check how. I can address this again, where if you... If you input Fireball as your name when starting a new game, which I guess you could try out now. If 
fireball, he can play in magician mode. What could that mean? Well, we can hear the intro again, where it's... Uh, it's the intro music from Castlevania 64 again. It's 1830, that's the year it was. I thought it was later than that. You can also... You know, by the way, if you finish the game in Magician mode, you unlock Fighter mode, which... If you finish the game with that, you unlock Shooter mode, and if you finish the game with that, you unlock Thief mode. You can't actually get into any of those until you complete the previous one, but... Here we go again, let's watch this coffin, which is kind of big, but it's tiny compared to when Dracula actually comes out of it. You know, makes you wonder how he fit in there. Oh, you can't actually... Can't actually skip this, I guess. For some reason I thought oh, you could skip some... Well, I think you can skip some of the cutscenes, but... Kind of makes sense that you wouldn't be able to skip this one because of what happens. I can use the turbo button that I have, though, I guess. So oh, when you start off in Magician mode, you have all the cards. I can actually check out all the cards now. Without having to grind them. The ones that we didn't get before were Saturn, God of Agriculture, and the Father of Jupiter has the potential of a familiar. Pluto, God of the Underworld, has the potential of special. Black Dog. The Black Dog is said to consume darkness, has the power of darkness, and the Unicorn. Said to have been white with a single holy horn on its forehead, has the power of light, so... So you can see your intelligence is through the roof, even though your other stats are kind of shitty. And you start out with all the DSS cards in your inventory, so... Let's use the best combo and plow through the game like it was nothing. There we go, 9999 damage. And the giant boat is completely random, so it's like even control that and yet. This is how you cheese everything. Oh, I died. Because you also take that much damage when you get hit once. So, so that was nice, wasn't it? Oh, and it doesn't let you continue because I haven't saved that all yet. So you get to watch the screen just melt away like that. So there we are. There we are, that was Castlevania Circle of the Moon. I don't remember if there's anything else I want to show off about this, or if I'm pretty much done now. No, I don't think so. I mean, there's one thing that I was trying to get, like, on my other file. Where you need to grind a certain item off of the um, off of one of the skeletons that I didn't even get to. One of the uh, skeletons. Hang on. I don't know why I'm here. I didn't get the item, did I? You're supposed to get like a ring, toy ring, I think. It looks like it's useless, and it mostly is. But you can use it to. Transform into something very interesting. Guess I'm gonna try to grind it for a little bit. Did I get the Pluto card? I think I did get the Pluto card in this file. I think that, you know, funnily enough, I think the place you get the Pluto card is you have to grind another one of those. Um... Yes, I did. There it is. I have to grind another one of those fake candles that appear in one of the old boss rooms after the fact. Oh boy, I'm actually kind of far away from... I guess I better go the other way. You can... oh yeah, there's a place down here that I forgot about that you can... where you can grind experience if you're trying to, like, max out your level. Which is also good for grinding, technically, since as you get more levels, you get more luck. But 
the place I was trying to get to was... Um, I guess that's what I was doing the last time I was playing, because otherwise I wouldn't be here in this uh, save room, I don't think. I can't even need the... Uh, I don't even know why I bothered to get the old uh, the Pluto card physically, since you don't need to go and use the power of Pluto. If you use the glitch, which I always use. But you need to use the power of Pluto for the item crush. So let me see if I can get to that place first. So what card combination do I have selected? Pluto and... Salamander, okay. Need to do item crash here. In this place which is already be open. Yeah, it is. Uh, let me see item crash. Which makes the skeleton guy be there we go. Oh I got I got it immediately, okay. I wasn't expecting that. Pretty sure I tried winding this. I don't remember, I think I tried winding this before and it didn't do anything, but let me see. It's a toy ring, it's a useless ring. It's technically better than the, uh, than the, uh, the luck ring stat-wise, except for luck, I guess, but I think if you, oops, hang on, if you try to do the skeleton transformation while wearing the toy ring, then you still become a skeleton. All right, never mind, that's not how you do it. How do you use this, then? If you get the Toy ring, let me see. Then, uh, oh. Oh, damn it, never mind, that's not the one I want. The one I want is called the bear ring. Shoot, never mind. I thought that was the one I wanted, but I was mistaken. Alright, I guess I'm gonna grind this for a little bit, cause... I'm actually gonna have to stop soon, since, uh... I got a thing I gotta take care of in like half an hour or something, but uh, let me see if I can at least grind this for a little bit. Okay, this guy's called the skeleton medalist, at least he dies in one hit. Oh, okay. Okay, let me just use a normal, uh, you know. Oh, that doesn't affect him. <laughs> That's why. Gotta use the item crush. Can't hit him through the wall either, so... I'll be prone to the lock ring back on too. That's probably gonna help. I don't think I'm gonna be able to grind this much longer anyway, because I don't have, uh, you know... I don't have uh, that many hearts. Oh, damn it. There we go. Actually, let me try doing the item press after I already come into the room. See if, uh, if that helps or not. No, it didn't. Damn it. That didn't help at all. It did the opposite of helping, as a matter of fact. So he's gonna... Okay, so he drops the toy ring commonly. Oh, shit. Hey, that's what I was trying to do. Thank you very much. I can grind the thing twice with a single item crush, which I don't think is going to happen now because of how much that took. But oh well. Oh, there we go. Never mind. But I'm out of hearts now to do, it, do the item crush with, so doesn't matter. I can grind it. Oh well. You know what? Let me find a video of it since I'm pretty sure that exists and. It's pretty much the last thing I want to show before I end this off. The bearing. Okay, this video, if you know, with apologies to 
Steamboy27 who provides it for any who watch. It's going to show what I was trying to show. I believe. There we go. Just gotta get that on top of this thing. Uh, just overlay it like that. It's like you can't even tell the difference. Hello everyone, this is... Oh hey. <laughs> well, he's... giving the intro. Very helpfully so, but... I think uh, you don't really need that to... you know, see what it does, so... With, with apologies again. Get the bearing from the skeleton medalist and the grand skeleton medalist, which I just showed off, is the... Um, I need to re do the item crush, uh, item crush with the stopwatch, so that you can slow down time enough that you even have a chance at killing him. And then, if you're very lucky, you can you can grind the bearing. There it is. I think you equipped it. And sure, he has. All right. And if you equip the bearing and bring with the curse of the bear. And you do the uh, Pluto and Black Dog combination, which helps you transform into a skeleton. And you can watch what happens instead. You become this goofy green bear, which I think is from a different game, and can shoot these bear rockets. Well, I guess you can turn on the audio for that. It can double jump. It has, I think, two attacks. Its normal B shoots an arced bear missile. I think it does just about as much damage as the whip. The upward one shoots one from its backpack, shoots low. Does that use hearts? I guess not. Alright. Same was apply for the skeleton. If you get hit once, you're dead. Oh, but okay. It's there just to be funny. It doesn't have the power of the uh, skeleton bomber. I mean, the skeleton. Because it doesn't have a giant, uh... Bone. Uh, what's it called? It doesn't have a giant bone that'll kill anything in one hit. So, uh, there's that. But if you do get hit once, it's game over. This is basically a little cameo. They they made a game about, like, school kids fighting hmm. or something, and then... Yeah, I don't know. Let me find that reference, actually. All I know that this is really bad. Oh, no! There is the bear tank from Rakuya hey, Kids, hey, hey. who... Dead. Attacks my friend, different kind of bombs. So Alright. Like it's unbelievable how much damage that bomb does. That was the reference, I guess. Wow, I can't believe I didn't die. And it's but also yeah, a that's, Konami that's thing, so there you go. Whoa. I mean, it jumps pretty fast. Its jumping rate is really high. I mean, it's also really high for the What's normal that? character. Mega heart. I want that. Heart high. Yeah, and it's really difficult to play as this thing. It's just there for kicks, really. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, but you know, I say that as if I ever That's unlock that. I want to show you how much the bomb does, but I really can't, like, get get them to get closer. But this arcing motion, I don't know, you can get used to it. I mean, I don't recommend playing as this. Hell no, don't play as this character. Let's see if this works. Wow, yeah, it does, like, double the damage. <laughs> Alright then. Oh! But and that's it. There we go. Right there. Uh, huh. Well, that's that. It's so kind of funny thing. For you. If you want to see, if you want to see it in action, I don't know. Look up something else. But that's basically it. This has been bonus episode. Yeah, yeah, nice. And thank you for the demonstration purposes. But uh, I was actually kind of wondering. You know, this kind of helps fill a little, um, I guess, incomplete thing that I was uh, regarding the bear reference that are also stream references, because, you know, there's a red bear enemy in the game, the werebear, and there's also a blue bear enemy called the grizzly, so I guess with that bear transformation, that's where the green bear appears, and that is where the, the trinity is completed. Also, I didn't get any, um, didn't get any bear ring drops from, from the, uh, this, so... Gonna quit. If I actually wanna take the time to keep grinding out so I can try it out, which I don't know if I'm going to, given that I've already finished everything. Might go back to that. Uh, but yes, that was 
That was Castlevania Circle of the Moon, the first of the... The first of the Game Boy Advance Castlevanias. And as I said, not... I wouldn't say it's my favorite one, but I don't think it's bad either. It's enjoyable in its own way. And you know, it, it also kind of have, has that weird uh, tendency that would still continue on later to... ...to where some of the games that had the lower technical capabilities of the Game Boy Advance would try to look as much as possible like Symphony, for whatever reason. Well, I guess because, you know, Symphony is where the big success came. And the one that became the game that set the standard for pretty much all the other uh, RPG-style 2D Castlevanias after that point. So it looks like... Looks like I have to go now, so I will see you sometime later this week. Probably not tomorrow, but uh, soon with the next game that's going to be... Castlevania Harmony of the Suns, also for the Game Boy Advance. So I will see you later with that.